we are going to pray. If you can pair yourselves into two or pair yourselves into three, we are going to pray. The next five minutes is a serious time of prayer. Please, no carelessness. Focus on Jesus. Minimize moving up and down. And let's pray. Because I want to speak and release some graces upon your life. I'd like you to pray. Whether you are seated, whether you are standing, whether you are lying on the floor. I just want you to take some time and pray in the spirit in one minute. Go ahead and pray. Shades Kabalakata Paranda Gelekosiata Rada Badaga de Beleketos. Those who are watching online, make sure you are connecting. If you are alone, pray. Jesus is there. This is a destiny defining moment. Kate Prakata Belekata Praska Baratos. E Prakata Bareska Pelando Shalabarato Siata. Shadaska Tefreska de Berenda Gebras. Ombra kata para kata fras kata belaketes kebrende kata belaketos lika para sabaranda bare kata lekaso sediata kraba daga da brete kebere tu siates. Pray. It's a new season for you. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Someone pray. It does not matter that you are coming from that lowly estate. The hand of his majesty lifting you by his spirit, revealing you. You are an effulgence of the glory of the Lord. That through your life, people will learn God afresh. Through your life, they will see the excellency of the power and of the wisdom of the spirit. Hate pras kata beleka to sofra de gebas Ranta parasa pras kata res kata leko shadis ekratike berena vegata soto proto segates In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus we are still praying Father what area of revelation in my life is deficient? Open my eyes to see it. Go ahead and pray. What area is it my finances? Is it that I do not understand the dynamics of excelling in my spiritual life? Is it that I do not understand the wisdom of living and exerting dominion over the cosmos? Open my eyes, O God, that I may behold wondrous things. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The principles that make for character, the principles in the name of Jesus, the engracing that brings total freedom and liberty over curses, over yokes, over diabolic manifestations. Reveal, reveal by your spirit. Reveal by your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point you are going to pray before I speak over your life. You know the area of needs that you have. That you know when God steps in and it is sorted, it will truly give you the time to sort the king. Some of you maybe is housing. Some of you maybe is sorting out certain material things. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. It says, he that told you have not asked for anything. It says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I want you to open your mouth and unashamedly ask God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Lord, sort this area of my life that I will have the liberty to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Your marriage, your finances, your children, your basic needs, your family, cry unto the God of heaven. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Shabras katabela katoska prande ke barusa siata ekra tegata be katoska tebela kosh rest round about in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. A businessman is praying. 
in the name of Jesus. A career person is praying. Someone is need, who is in need for employment, of employment is praying. A man of God is praying. A prophet in the making, an apostle in the making. Pray from the depth of your heart. Let the maker of men make your life, sort your life, bring you rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your needs are met, I assure you that you will have the time to serve His Majesty. A lifetime is too long to have your needs met. A lifetime was designed to serve the King, not serve things, not look for things. Looking for things for the rest of your life is an erroneous use of destiny. Hallelujah. What you are about to receive is the engracing that now makes the things that you have learned. It says, now that ye know these things, if all I do is to leave you at the point of just discussions and knowledge, then I did not do you much. For every time God speaks, there is an engracing. The assignment of that grace is to rest upon you and to cause the things that you have heard to give you the impetus, the propelling force to move in obedience and to partner with your obedience to make manifest the things that you have believed. That is the assignment of the anointing. The assignment of the grace of God that follows his word is to back to propel you number one to obey and then in obeying to partner with your obedience now to make manifest the things that you have believed you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh, Yahweh, Listen, as I speak over you, I want you to shake away that lie that the devil has told you you will never rise. I want you to shake away that demonic belief. Just because you came from the village, shake away that demonic belief. Apostle, I've lived a wayward life, I've lived a scattered life. Do not worry. In his presence, there is room for restoration. But I want to pray for you. I want you to receive from the depth of your heart. I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare. I call upon the God who helps men, the one who helps men to rise, the one who helps men to thrive. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to command strange results from tonight. Begin to command strange results from tonight. Strange results from tonight. Extraordinary results from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your passion for the things of God, your passion for the things of the Spirit, fresh fire upon your altar, fresh fire upon your altar, fresh fire upon your altar. Now hear me, I want you to receive this prayer, I want to pray for you. There are many of you, I'm saying it prophetically, between now and December, you will stand here to dedicate your own home. I say it by the God who sent me in the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of you, as it is now, you may not even have work to do. But you see,
God is ever willing to make his power manifest. I say it again, by his favor, may God start sorting your personal needs. Please hear me. For some of you, while I described the human body, I perhaps call systems that are physically failing in your own body. While it was an analogy to explain the kingdom systems for victory, for some of you, you were just wondering and saying, Apostle is just calling this thing. Anything that has entered your body and has vowed to cut short your life, I command it must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your systems, out of your organs, now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak over your finances. If you don't need it, you can receive it for someone else. But I want to pray over your finances. There is an advantage we have in addition to our value, our wisdom, relationships. There is the grace of God that engenders favor. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. I like how the Bible puts it. It says, and God is able to make all grace, not some grace, all grace are bound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency sufficiency means the capacity to always rise to the occasion never disappointing in all things it says may abound to every good work i decree and declare in the name of jesus the son of the living god for someone here regardless the financial mountains that stand before you i call upon my god who is also your god let things begin to change supernaturally open financial doors 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 in the name of jesus christ it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i decree and declare whatever makes resources to go out of your hands whether is the careless use of them or a demonic manipulation whatever be the case i decree and declare the grace to retain resources receive it now are you ready for favor I will pray this one today i will pray it at the miracle service next week i will continue to pray it till you become a living expression of the favor of god let me pray it for you what is in favor huh. favor has the ability to accelerate your life and your destiny favor has the supernatural ability to bring to end seasons of hardship seasons of all kinds of things most people have not understood the also passing excellency of carrying the genuine grace for favor and i have told you the proof of favor is not money money is the least thing you can be given as a result of favor the proof of favor is when god connects you to the hearts of men that you call on one man and a nation is ready to respond to you and even to attend to your needs. I don't know who that person is, but I'm stretching my hands towards you. That grace, I lay my hands on my own head and I pray by the privilege of the election of grace, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Rest upon you. Rest upon you. This grace called favor, let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you in the city, in the country. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That you become a living evidence of what God can do with men. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by this impartation of favor, 
I call forth whoever has been mandated by God to participate in your rising. Whether you know them or not, I declare this week by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may they show up in your life. May they show up in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Final prayer. Whatever has refused to move forward. You have moved it by your energy. You have moved it intellectually. You have outsourced men to move it. But it has refused to move. I stand by the, the, the advantage of the prophetic. I move you forward. I move you forward. Make constructive progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus name we pray. You have believed it. Your eyes will see it. Your hands will handle it. I say it again. Your eyes will see it. And your hands will handle it. In Jesus name we pray. Hallelujah. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, and breakthrough. As the servant of God, Apostle Joshua Selman brings you God's word with accuracy and power. power, 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 power. The Lord in one minute for a privilege to be here, gathered inside and outside. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Go ahead and thank him. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of fellowship. Thank him for the miracle service. Thank him because indeed you will never be the same. Not after tonight. Ask him to give you an extraordinary encounter tonight. An extraordinary encounter by the power of his spirit. Visit me, O oh God. Turn my life around. Give me a change of story. Let there be a tangible evidence that I encountered your grace tonight. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for the privilege to not only be alive, but to be able to witness another miracle service. And Lord, we thank you for Zaria. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your faithfulness over our lives. Lord, we pray that tonight indeed would be an extraordinary encounter. We allow for your spirit unrestrained access in this place tonight. May your word prevail over us and let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome to a miracle service for the month of April. I sincerely want to honor and appreciate everyone thank you for making this time the lord bless you yesterday we had the privilege of honoring our fathers i'm seeing um pastor abubakar let's honor him thank you so much sir a joy and i also spotted dr anointed the lord bless you we sincerely appreciate you in the name of jesus christ now um i intend for us to walk with time so that we can finish so we'll be very fast um, just to perform a few functions. We'll be dedicating um, a few of our children. We'll just quickly do a baby dedication right now. And then we'll go to the teaching of the word. While that is happening, let me encourage you, please, if for any reason you are yet to write your prayer request inside, outside, all of the overflows and those following online, 
you can use now until the time we make the call. Please do so um, so that when it's time to submit the request, that shouldn't be the times that we're starting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Right, so we have, by the privilege of God's grace, are you celebrating God for the increase that he's bringing to the house? In the name of Jesus Christ. So, very quickly, please, when I call on the families, let's save time. Unfortunately, because of our time, they will not be singing, dancing. Walk straight to the altar and let's get straight to the business of the night so that we can do a few other things. Um, the family of Shadrach, Akko, Omale. Let's celebrate them. Are you thanking the Lord for what he's done? The family of Sunday, Raphael. Sunday, Raphael. And Prisca, Sunday. The family of Oluwasami Bonire. Oluwa Sami Bonire and his wife Omolola, you're welcome. Let's celebrate them. Is this the best you can do for them? The Bible says to rejoice with them that rejoice. The families of Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel. Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel, celebrate them as they come. And finally, I have here the family of Charles. Ada and his dear wife Princess. Keep clapping till they arrive here. Charles Ada, Ibrahim Danjuma, Oluwa Sami Bonire, Sunday Raphael, and Shadrach Ako. Let's celebrate them. This is the Lord's doing, and we thank God for the blessings upon this, our precious people. Hallelujah. The miracle of the word of God. Let me tell you the truth. Every time you see God bless families with children, rejoice with them. By the privilege of what I do, I've had the honor to pray for families that up until now, some of them are trusting God. They will give anything for the gift of children. As much as we trivialize this, there are people... Who have almost committed suicide because of the inability to have children they've done anything you can think about from a medical standpoint travel across the globe from pillar to post but it seems like that blessing has not manifested so for some of them as soon as they got married the lord blessed them with this miracle don't you trivialize it it is the hand of god one more time all glory be to jesus <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord I will always remind us why do we dedicate children not just children but why do we dedicate any and everything that we find valuable number one dedication is an acknowledgement of the faithfulness and the mercy of god are we together yes we have learned here and god has shown us mercy enough to know that without the assistance and the help of god almighty no man has the power by himself to do anything it is only marvelous in our eyes if it is the lord's doing praise the name of the lord so when we dedicate these children we are coming to say lord we thank you for this gift these children represent the future of this ministry the future of what we are doing no matter how long we stay one day if christ tarries we are going years ago um i then i was in area e I was counseling and I would never forget this story. A woman met me and she brought in her daughter. True story. 20 year old lady. What was wrong with this lady? She started having all kinds of demonic manifestations in her life. Now, before the woman got born again, true story. As at the time she got born again or as at the time she got married, she was not yet a sound Christian still with tradition and all of that. And they tried and tried to have a child when it seemed <clears throat> impossible they took them somewhere one thing led to the other they found themselves at a river are we still together and the person they saw the herbalist now what we like call him the spiritualist told them that they would do something for them with the water and the woman will take in but the condition 
was that when this child becomes 20 years on the dot, they must return that child there to do something. And the woman, according to what she told me, she said she looked at the herbalist and said, but you're an old man. Probably by that time you'll be dead. Guess where I was going? They pointed one little boy who was running around there. They said, if I'm not there, this boy will be there. So as the boy was running around and playing around that shrine, he did not know that sooner or later he will be the one there. You are a failure until your succession is accurate. Hallelujah. No matter what you know and no matter what you can do, the glory of the church is what reveals the excellency of the finished work of Christ. If the church failed, we will be safe to say Christ failed. You are as successful as the success of who comes after you. Are we together? So when we celebrate the gift of children, we are saying, Lord, we thank you for giving us the privilege to have a future. When Pharaoh, Moses was negotiating the exodus of God's people, Pharaoh said, men, you can go, but we will leave the children and the women. And Moses said, no way. You are trying to say we don't have a future. We should celebrate now and not have a future. He said, we are going. Hallelujah. Number two, dedication is an official handover service that means the parents who say we are only stewards of these children we do not have the intelligence the relationships nor the the sufficiency to be able to raise these children to reflect jesus even among the disciples that were selected by jesus one was a devil himself so no matter how you train a child except God shows you mercy, you can be Jesus and still train Judas. So when parents come to dedicate their children, what they are saying is, Lord, we look up to you. You are the only one who has the power to turn this baby into a leader, this baby into a blessing. Every ambrober in the society was once like these children. Nobody was born an adult something translated them from these innocent babies we are seeing today some of them to become a nuisance to society hallelujah yes it is an act of humility to stand before jesus christ number one acknowledging him for this blessing and number two saying lord all that it would take remember what I, the prayer that i led you to pray yesterday or uh, was it um here or in the school of ministry now i don't even know which one again give us this day he says our daily bread your daily bread is not food your daily bread is whatever you need to be effective for some of you your daily bread can mean money some of you your daily bread is a job some of you your daily bread is peace among the couple whatever it would take to grant peace and efficiency give it to us hallelujah praise the name of the lord i salute you my dear people the lord bless you the ladies, I salute you more. I salute men, but I salute the ladies more. Let's celebrate our ladies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want you to stretch your hands towards them. As the body, you don't have to kneel. Please stand. Stretch your hands towards these children and pray the way you will pray for your own children. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Is someone praying? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the gift and the blessing of these precious ones. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray and ask that they will grow to become like princes and princesses in the palace. In the name of Jesus, we will not give birth for trouble. We have no covenant with a future of disaster. Is someone praying? in the name of jesus christ lord we pray for these precious gifts that you have given this family all these families represented protect them preserve them someone is praying protect them preserve them father and mother came out together so father and mother together will raise the children in the name of jesus are you praying now it's not just a widow that will raise this child or a widower. Lord, since they came out together to hand these children over to you, in the name of Jesus, together they will raise these children. There will be no double standards of parenting. The parents are both believers. The children will serve the God of their parents. 
you are praying from the depth of your heart we release the blessing of the church the blessing of this house lord let these children be greater than us in the name of jesus greater in fire greater in achievements greater in wisdom pray one final prayer lord these parents will not bury their children in the name of jesus christ grant them the gift and the privilege of long life in the name of jesus christ long life prosperous life visionary life and impactful life hallelujah and for some of them let's pray lord these children are the first they will not be the only as many as they desire grant it unto them these children only come as the first or whatever number they occupy in the line of children but may they not be the only ones in the name of jesus christ god can add to men he added to the church he can add to a family for in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray now very quickly i'm going to read out their names as we do now yes we'll just um when i mention their name let's know which of the child and then when we are done i will just speak officially to dedicate them and then we'll just present their certificates praise the name of the lord the first year that we have you are going to help me parents if i can't call the name to save time this is amy amy all right so you heard the father nobody pronounces it better than the father so this is amy Ojo. is that true did i get that right it means god's light oh god's light let's celebrate her that's the first we have here the second that we have here is dasha dasha okay so dasha this is dasha what is this with ladies 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 gentlemen when you you are going to mix it in the name of jesus christ dasha so we have dasha here the third we have is dunamis yes go ahead father finish up dunamis oluwa dunsin dunamis oluwa dunsin bonire let's celebrate dunamis hallelujah the fourth that i have here is deborah ibrahim celebrate deborah deborah was a warrior in the bible deborah ibrahim the little one she's sleeping hallelujah and finally we have grace and charles where is grace grace and charles hallelujah praise the name of the lord father in the name of jesus christ agree with me now as i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead and the privilege of the priestly and prophetic grace i decree and declare that our daughter here grace and her charles we dedicate you in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit we decree and declare indeed that you will be a woman of valor and a woman of excellence in the name of jesus you will grow to become a sign and a wonder we bless you everything connected to ancestry everything connected to foundations we separate you away from it in the name of jesus christ we declare that you have been grafted into christ by reason of coming from a christian family and it remains so in the name of jesus that when you get to the age of discretion you will hand over your entire life and destiny to jesus may it be so in jesus name i pray amen and amen deborah ibrahim in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i dedicate you i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that you are unto jesus and jesus alone the fullness of your days you will fulfill in the name of jesus christ i declare that you will succeed early in life may you never do anything twice to succeed you will do it once and you will go ahead in the name of jesus indeed for your generation may you be a deborah the hand of god is mighty upon you the resources to raise you as a responsible child we release by faith in the name of jesus christ we dedicate you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit dunamis oluwa dunsin in the name of jesus christ we dedicate you in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit i decree and declare that you will excel and even surpass your parents 
you will serve the God of your father and your mother all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus, the spirit that lifts an individual above his contemporaries, may that grace rest upon you. You remain a leader everywhere you go. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Because of you, you will attract every good thing to this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. What's, I thought someone was helping me here. Dasha now. Dasha, we dedicate you in the name of the Father. Are you still helping me? In the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We decree and declare you brought joy to this family when you came. You will bring joy as you remain. In the name of Jesus, you will never bring joy and sorrow at the same time. In the name of Jesus, you have chosen joy. You will remain a baby bringing joy. You will grow to become a teenager bringing joy. Even an adult that brings joy. In the name of Jesus, you will never attract pain to your parents. In the name of Jesus Christ, that when you get to the age of discretion, the same way your parents handed their lives and their destinies to Jesus, so shall it be for you. In the name of Jesus, you are a proper child. Everything that makes for a proper child rests upon your life. Therefore, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Look, he's standing here and he's not even doing anything. Praise God. I mean, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will serve the God of your father and your mother all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus, we separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. They will not find you. Nothing will cut short your life. Everything connected to ancestry, everything connected to wicked foundations, we declare you are separated from it. You will serve the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be a mighty vessel in the hands of God. The Lord will use you to bring healing to nations. In the name of Jesus, we therefore dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, I want to quickly present the um, certificate. Hallelujah. And um, what will happen is I will shake the fathers or I will shake whoever is not holding the child. Then both of you can hold it for your snapshot. Let's, let's do that very fast. I would have invited our fathers to help us, but for time, let me just do it myself. Praise the name of the Lord. So the first that I have here, this is to certify that Emmy Omale, who was born on 15 September 2021, was dedicated to God on this day, Friday 29th, 2022 in the presence of her father Shadrach Ako Omale and the mother Praise Olua Kemi Omale. Let's celebrate them. This is to certify that Dasha Sunday who was born on 22nd November 2021 is dedicated to God on this day, Friday, 29th April, 2022, in the presence of her father, Sunday Raphael, and the mother, Sunday Prisca. The Lord bless you. Congratulations. Hallelujah. This is to certify that Dunamis Oluwadunsin Bonire, who was born on the 9th of February 2022, was dedicated unto God on Friday, 29th April 2022, in the presence of his father, Oluwa Sami Bonire, and Omolola Bonire. Congratulations to you both. Hallelujah. This is to certify that Deborah Ibrahim,
who was born on the 16th February 2022 was dedicated to God on Friday 29th April 2022 in the presence of her father Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel and the mother Olabisi Suliat Ibrahim. Congratulations. And finally, this is to certify that Grace N.A. Charles, who was born on the 6th of March, 2022, was dedicated unto God today, Friday, 29th April, in the presence of her father, Charles Ada, and the mother, Princess Charles. Congratulations. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much. The way you clap, that's how men will celebrate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important to know who you were dedicated to. Hallelujah. There are people who were dedicated to trees, others to plants, others to animals, others to rivers. And it is important, if it is not Jesus, the son of the living God, you were dedicated to, don't say, I am an adult. You may not come like this for you to give you a certificate, but you can go before the Lord and say, Father, my innocent father and my innocent mother did the best they knew to do. They handed me over to a deity to take care of me. But now with spiritual intelligence, I know that no man is able to take care of me. Therefore, as an adult, I use the power of my will and in consistency with scripture, I dissociate myself from anything that is not of the Christ. Hallelujah. So that you don't have all these spirits appearing to you and saying, I hope you know who I am. No, no stranger should come around your life. If it's an encounter with the Lord Jesus, yes. Angels from heaven, yes. Not a spirit who appears and bullies you. There are many people's destinies that are under siege because of things they were handed over to we thank god tonight is a miracle service you must be delivered in jesus name have you been blessed so let's teach a bit and then we'll pray why is teaching important before the ministry of power as we know it because the teaching of the word of god provides the basis for us to place our faith in jesus Acts chapter 8, when you read verse 5. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. The Bible says Philip went down to the city of Samaria. The first thing he did was to preach. He preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, the Bible says the people with one accord gave heed. So that is your own part of the deal. The assignment of Philip, the man of God, is to preach Christ much more before the demonstration of power and any of these things christ must be exalted and it is based on the teachings of the truth of christ that his power flows but your own assignment is to give heed the bible says with one accord undivided attention they gave heed unto the things that philip spake and as a result they heard and they saw the miracles which he did hallelujah I felt stirred in my heart as I was praying as to what I will charge our hearts with for this miracle service. And the Lord put it very strongly in my spirit that many believers do not know how to receive from God. Please lend me your undivided attention. I want to teach you within a few minutes, just a charge, and then we'll begin to pray. Many believers do not know how to receive from God. Receiving from God takes understanding and if you do not know the principles that govern receiving from god you will be surprised that you will be around the atmosphere where god is giving freely like he always does and yet never be able to receive are we together how to receive how to receive the Bible does not just tell us that God is a giver. God gives. 
he that did not spare his son the bible says but offered him freely the bible says how much more with him will he give us all things freely to enjoy so we know from scripture that god is a giver please say god is a giver in fact god's idea of fatherhood is not having children god's idea of fatherhood is the ease with which you give he says if you being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father give one synoptic account says the holy spirit another says good things it is important fathers give and god is our heavenly father that means he's a giver but it's one thing to give and it's another thing to know how to receive hallelujah now the first law of receiving let me teach you very quickly say charge the first law of receiving is you must believe according to hebrews 11 and verse 6 that god exists in the first place if you do not believe in god then you do not even believe in the presence of the one who gives you what to receive the bible says for without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must come believing that he is that means he exists and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him god is is a powerful revelation god is i know you know god is in heaven but do you know he's in your midst you must believe that god is it's true that you believe he's seated at the throne in some place somewhere but do you believe that he's in your midst you are here turning lives around i worship you i worship you you are not worshiping he who is far you are here mending broken hearts i worship you i worship you so when you come to the lord the first law of receiving is you must know and you must believe that god is here jacob woke up and said surely the lord is in was in this place and i knew not it's one thing for god to be in a place but it's another thing for you to be conscious of divine presence are we together how do we know that god is in our midst number one by faith based on the integrity of his word he says where two or three are gathered in my name you don't just know that god is there because someone is shouting those are the latter proofs that god is there the primary proof that god is there the basis of your knowing that god is there is the integrity of his word not the feelings not the falling down not the miracles the miracles are support systems but the basis that god is in the midst of his people is because he has said that where two or three are gathered in his name he will be there in our midst are we together so we know for a shorty that god is in our midst because we are gathered in his name So you must believe that god exists that he is and that he's in your midst ready to give ready to bless ready to heal ready to deliver someone shout say god is here god. one more time say god is, god is here now but the dynamics of the manifestation of the godhead you have to understand the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is that part of the godhead who shows up in the midst of his people in honor to the father and in honor to the son the holy spirit represents the only presence of the father and the son in the midst of his people so when we say god is here it is true that he's there but if you were to go to heaven now heaven you will still see the father seated on his throne are we together now the part of the godhead who represents the trinity in our midst is the holy spirit yes jesus is here as his word but the personality that is in the midst of his people, according to scripture, is the Holy Spirit. Are you learning? So it's very, very important for you to know. The first law of receiving is that you must believe that the giver that you will receive from is God Almighty and that he's in your midst. Number two, very quickly you must recognize that god is all-powerful 
because if you do not recognize that God is all powerful you would doubt if he can do some things there is nothing you cannot do Sam sang it beautifully here what's that if you have said it then you will do it if you have said it Have you had issues in your life and you saw so many people come to sympathize with you and you had to drive them away because you knew that they didn't have the power to help you. They were just around to console. God does not come to console. You must understand that the one who has come is all powerful. How do we know he's all powerful? Write this down. Matthew 28 and verse 18. Media help us please very quickly. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power all authority the word yes exousia all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth god is all powerful authority has been conferred upon the son so you must realize secondly that god is all powerful that means the medical condition that means the spiritual condition that means the financial condition is still within the power of god to solve you must believe this if you do not believe that god is all powerful then the devil will prey on your ignorance or your limited knowledge and now begin to suggest to you do you think god can solve your unique problem i know god can solve your neighbor's problem but if god is aware of your problem are you sure he will attend to you i have good news for you the god that you have come to encounter tonight is all powerful and he will show up as such in your life in the name of jesus christ those outside are you saying amen in the name of jesus christ psalm 62 popular scripture and verse 11 psalm 62 and verse 11 psalm 62 and verse 11 god has spoken once twice have i heard that all power belongs to god everybody say all power belongs that means he was not given he owns it he's not only using it we are using the power that is not our own we were given god was not given power it belongs to him ah, this is powerful there is a difference between a steward and an owner all of them can demonstrate authority but a steward's authority is derived from his alignment to the owner the owner can choose to collect it but who can stand against the lord no one can no one will he doesn't have power he owns it who can stand against our king no one can no one Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. The second law of receiving. Is that you must know that God is not only here but he owns all power the power to heal every sickness the power to deliver brothers and sisters he also owns the power to lift Jimmy got it right I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon you are the lifter of men, the lifter of men. One more time. I will hold on through the storm, and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon be filled. You are the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Hear me. Some of you, after this miracle, they will come to check you like Jesus and say, why are you looking for him in the grave? He is risen. He was in the grave. Many people will come to your yesterday and not find you there. Because like he rose, you are risen. A new level of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
please sit down so number one you must know and believe that God exists he's alive number two that God is all powerful and I taught you this don't forget God was not given power he owns it we were given we can't claim ownership we are stewards and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful our authority is derived is not generated but nobody handed over power to God he owns it number three is someone learning already the third law of receiving is that you must come to God with your desires and your expectations your desires and expectations Acts chapter 3 from verse 4 and 5 Acts chapter 3 from verse 4 and 5 the Bible says the man had get beautiful now and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us verse 5 the Bible says and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something he didn't expect to receive everything but he expected to receive something do you know the something you are expecting to receive don't just randomly come and say god bless me touch me that's too vague he says give us this day and it describe what it should be given our daily bread are we together you must have desires and expectations mark 11 and verse 24 it says verily verily i say unto you jesus is speaking now what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them many people come to god and they do not know what they desire they don't know what the, what they want they just hope god touch me bless me that may look spiritual but in a service like this, it is important that you come to God with your desire. Philippians chapter 4, please. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be careful. The word careful, there is the word anxious. He's dealing with anxiety. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, he says. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving read the remaining part please one to go let your requests be made known unto god that's the reason why you wrote your prayer requests an accurate representation of your desires are we together you must come to god with specific and exact desires lord i am trusting you to visit me in this area lord i have come by faith believing that you will visit me in this area don't say god as you are looking at me like this am i all right that, that is a as if you talk like that you will receive a general blessing encouragement impartation and you will go back but there are people who will so that you will know when he visits you if you don't know what you are looking for how do you know when he has visited you so perhaps you are seated here and you have no expectation. You were just invited to come. May I charge you therefore that on account of what I'm teaching, begin to cook up faith-filled expectations. Lord, I know you will come through for me this way. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Number one, you must believe that God exists. Number two, you must believe that he is all-powerful. Number three, you must come to him with your desires and expectations number four are you ready now receiving from god will always be by faith receiving from god will always be by faith it will take faith to receive from god what does it mean by faith it means two things number one receiving by faith means that what you are receiving must be consistent with the will of God or the word of God. Otherwise, there is no guarantee that you will have it from God. Receiving by faith, number one, means it must be in accordance with the will or the word of God. First John chapter 5 from verse 14 and 15. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, according to his will he heareth us not our according to our problems you must be sure that it is according to his will verse 15 
And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, then we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him. Is someone learning? To receive by faith means to ensure that what you are asking for is consistent with the will of God as revealed in scripture. Number two. By the way, what is the will of God? The will of God simply means that which is stated in his word for you. The will of God simply means that which is stated in his word for you. For instance, if you are trusting God to lift you financially, how do you know God will answer that prayer? Because it is clear from scripture that it is his desire to bless you. Are we together now? Yes. Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. The Bible says, yea, let the Lord, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So I know that my desire to prosper is consistent with the will and the word of God. Now the devil cannot tell me I'm praying amiss. I am asking according to his will because it's in accordance to his word. Is someone learning? For someone, you came to this miracle service to learn how to pray and receive. Not just, yes, you will receive, but learning, understanding why you may be praying and shouting at the gates of heaven and nothing is happening. You may be ignoring these principles. So to receive by faith means, number one, according to the will or the word of God. Number two, this is a more important understanding now. Receiving by faith means that you are you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands connected to the promise desired you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands connected to the promise desired this is the part of faith that many believers do not engage in you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands that are connected to the promise desired to receive by faith does not just mean to verify whether the word of God makes provision for that. You must be prepared to understand that every promise in the Bible, every one of God's commitment has scriptural demands that commit God to you. If you are not ready to obtain grace and fulfill the scriptural demands, then it remains a wish. Are we together? In John chapter 2, just right for reference, the wedding in Cana, the first miracle the Bible records according to John's synoptic account. The Bible says they were in a feast and wine had finished. And then they went to Jesus by the advice of um, Mary. And when they met Jesus, here's what he told them. You desire results. You want this shame and reproach to live your life. I am willing to turn the water to wine. But there is a scriptural demand. Fix this, uh, fill the six pots with water. And after they had done it, next instruction, now fetch it and find your way. Go to the rulers and serve them. The Bible says as they went, that water was now turned to wine. Most believers just say, Lord, remember you said you would do this. Lord, you said you will heal me. Lord, you said you will bless me. Lord, you said you will prosper me. But most believers do not pay attention to find out what is the scriptural demand connected to the promise desired. Listen, if this is all we do tonight, I didn't waste your time. Believe me. When a very responsible man came to Jesus in the Bible, he said, good master, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus had to make him know that, no, no, no. Issue of salvation cannot be with your strength. That was a responsible man. I know that I have a role to play in experiencing that salvation. What must I do? I can tell you that in this kingdom it's not all up to God and it's not all up to you. There is a role that God has to play, the role of performance. But your own role now is not only to believe God alone, but to be able to satisfy the scriptural, your participatory condition that releases the power of God to now get your desired result. This is the area where many believers fail. I'll give you an instance. So you are trusting the Lord to change your story. Say you are trusting God for a job or you are trusting God to lift you. Now watch this. You believe that God exists. He is a giver, including your job. You have satisfied that condition. 
Number two, you believe he's all powerful, that he can give you jobs. In the Bible, he saw some people idle. He said, Why sittest thou idle? They said, No man employ us. He called them to get to the vineyard immediately, and they had something to do. So God is able to give men jobs, for instance. Are we together? And number three, what's point number three? You must come with that desire. Your desire is to have a job, an honorable job that gives you an opportunity to take care of yourself, your parents, or your family, or whatever it is. Now you've done well, but the fourth area now to receive that job, it must be by faith. Is it God's will to provide for you a job? Absolutely. Absolutely from scripture. But then what are the scriptural demands for someone who desires that dimension of God's power? Are we together now? Yes. It's important. Number one, for instance, you want a job, you must kill the spirit of laziness from your life. That is your own, that is your own um, responsibility. Lord, I am willing to add value. I am willing to be valuable. So the more you invest in yourself, in learning and building yourself, you are making yourself prepared to be a blessing to whoever employs you. When Laban employed Jacob, that's the first expression of employment in the Bible. When Laban employed Jacob, Jacob was so valuable, Laban refused to let him go. Laban consulted with divination and they found out that the increase in his estate, his business, was because of the presence of one man. Have you become like that one man? Don't just say, God bless me and give me that job. I'm showing you how these things work. And then you believe in the power of the prophetic. So when a word is coming in the name of Jesus, may God grant you jobs. And you just carelessly say, Amen. This God, what is, I mean, you will be surprised. Remember, God only does what he says. He only does what he says. For tonight, there are three areas we are going to focus on. We're going to pray generally, but very quickly, there are three major areas while I prayed for this meeting, the Lord stirred in my heart. Number one, the Lord told me that there are many people that he desires to bring freedom from limitations. This is the first thing God wants to bring. You know what a limitation is? A limitation is an impedance. Something that stops you from making constructive progress. And sometimes progress at the rate that should be. Limitations. The first thing God wants to deal with. The spirits and the influences that bring limitation. And God is already speaking to someone who has faith. You have seen this spirit of limitation in your family. You've seen it with your father. You've seen it with your mother. You've seen it with sincere people, educated. They go to school and yet they are limited. Do you know what it means to be limited? To be limited does not mean to be incapacitated. It means that your full potential cannot find expression. Imagine with me, please. Look up, please. I'm supposed to walk on two, two of my feet. But imagine that one is tied. How do I walk effectively this way? You see that? That's how many people are. Imagine running the race of life on one of your feet. And then there are people running on two. There are others running on horses. And there are others God has given them a flight. You can't expect them to arrive at the same time. In the name of Jesus, I cast the spirit of limitation this night. Listen up. When it's time to pray, please don't be distracted. You didn't come to waste your time. Whether you are in here, outside, some of you are in ministry, but it's clear that there is an embargo of limitation upon you. Limitation will shut down your voice so that those who hear you don't hear you. You can be a man qualified. You raise other people in school, and yet they are the ones who come and feed you. It's limitation. This is the first thing God wants to deal with. Fight it. Don't say I'm from Plateau. I'm from Kaduna. I'm from Adamawa. Fight that spirit in the name of Jesus. I may come from this territory, but I've been called out of every tribe and every tongue. The limitations connected to ancestry. I break you free. You must challenge yourself this night. Listen now. Can I tell you this? Now, I say this respectfully speaking. I know that I'm talking to the whole world, but permit my bias especially for those of us who come from the middle belt slash not i respectfully submit to you that there is a spirit that pegs the achievement of people you'll find out that people do well they are sincere but they get to especially 
if you are the one who is lifting up the head of your family those horns come again and they sit upon your destiny in the name of jesus the son of the living god every limitation that will not let you go must go for you this night it must go for you this night please sit down look up according to deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 you are destined to be global but not just for the sake of marketing the flesh for the purpose of an excelling life can i tell you sincerely i have met people in my life after interacting with them for 20, 20 minutes i almost will ask them what are you doing where you are what covered you that those to see you are not seeing you I have met intelligent people. I've met young people who came with books for me and say, Apostle, I'm writing a book. Let me tell you sincerely, when I opened what they wrote, I was shocked. I said, this is not fair. This man of God should not be at this level. Can I tell you, all the people you celebrate are not the only ones there. There are other people who have fire and grace, but this spirit of limitation, they, I'm saying it again, in the name of Jesus Christ, especially for families here, where nobody has risen, beyond any level i come by the power that raised christ from the dead that spirit that ties you must give way this night in the name of jesus please sit down hallelujah i saw a gentleman last year i went to minister somewhere and those days on campus if you saw this gentleman you would think by now he should have about the largest ministry on earth believe me when you talk about a brother that loves god and is obedient and sincere like jesus will say an israelite in whom there is no guile we knew him to be a respectful and disciplined very responsible gentleman i won't tell you where i saw him probably he may be following online you see but I'm telling you, I almost bled from my heart. I said, God, this is, how can this guy be here? I am a witness to what this gentleman did. When you talk of love for God, you talk of keeping yourself for Jesus. Oh no, come on. But this spirit again. Respectfully speaking, there are many of our loved ones. When they pass around this place, they will tell you, I was in Zaria in 1975. I was in this place. I you will see them show you pictures. They snap with T.L. Osborne. They will show you pictures. They snap with people today who are pe presidents. They will show you pictures that they were eating together. So what suddenly happened that you just mark time like this? Can I tell you, some of you, that spirit is already resting on you. You are already seeing that the only thing going forward in your life is your age. Nothing else is increasing again. Nothing else at all. There are people, let me tell you this. I know a man sincerely and I stand by God. About 15 or 16 years he spent in the U.S. And he returned back and assumed the spirit of his territory. He's still there till today. This man will talk to you. It's not like they smuggled him back home with honor and dignity i remember praying for a man i don't know for how many years he was doing his phd the, the time he used you would do undergraduates and do masters and even be doing phd it's a spirit please this night i i i do not waste this opportunity god has come to break this limitation for see for many of us our loved ones did not even know it was a limitation they just accepted it because they said, how can they lie, Sharia? Everybody's like that. There are spirits that make sure you must beg. No matter how high you rise, you only eat by begging. The moment it finds somebody who seems to be the rising star to cut that person away and bring everybody back.
some of you god allowed you to travel far and come for this miracle service tonight because you are the one that mantle of your family has rested on you are the one who god is trusting to break this family free for god's sake from some of these limitations hallelujah look up in abuja we have this one of our precious ones one gentleman sir this gentleman designed something that he designed a drone system that can solve a major part of the security problem in nigeria here i heard they had been talking to me about the guy but then he was going to come and see me i said let him come when i saw what he did i stood there and i was looking at him i've been trying to see how at least i can maybe connect him to the nigerian army and then let's see how god helps him from there do you know how many people who have discovered things that can solve nigeria's problems let me tell you our corporate suffering is not the reflection of the weakness of everybody i can tell you this COVID thing you see when COVID was there do you know there were people who actually found the solution not i don't mean um, tra uh, um, traditional like they say stand and eat herbs like they have a genuine correct treatment there is a spirit on the black race we must cause is the spirit of servitude that must keep you that you only eat by begging for some of you there is an embargo upon your families can anything good come out of nazareth in fact they even know you historically they say those from this tribe if anybody comes from this region that there was a curse upon them and don't you just say it it does not work if you don't deal with it you will be surprised Am I wasting your time? This was the first thing the Lord put in my heart for us to deal with tonight. The spirit of limitation. I know the limitations that come with my own background. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, even if I'm the person you will use as the scapegoat to fight this, so that my siblings and everybody who comes from me never goes through this, I am willing to pay the price. Can I tell you, there are many regions you cannot rise beyond a certain group. No, no, those altars will come. I assure you that you are standing for God, doing ministry. You are standing for God, doing business. You are standing for God, excelling. Here they come. You can choose to postpone your miracle till another miracle service. Or you can insist this night and say lord i came prepared my heart jacob even your jacob had that limitation in his life don't just think god is called the god of jacob for nothing the bible says that night genesis 32 that jacob held on to god and said i will not let you go he said leave me for the day breaking he said i will not let you go until you bless me how about the man jabez the bible says the mother cursed him she did not name him. She cursed him. Jabez. Because I bore him in sorrow. And the young man just saw limitation in his life. And he became angry one day. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. In our regions here, where we come from, the moment you say you're a man of God, people start clapping for you and start sympathizing with you as if it's a funeral service they are conducting for you because based on the mindset that the territory has assumed it looks like you are a total failure who has given up everything valuable in your life sorry and shame on you that you want to serve jesus so this is how you are going to waste your destiny all the value you have is someone ready to break free How about those who vow to lift you and by the next day you go to the same office and they can't remember what they said. They said, I said, I'll promise you. No, I, I, maybe you did not hear me well. Ah, sir, you, prom you said you will help me. Can I tell you, when easy things become difficult, there is a spirit there. Don't sit down and just say it does not matter. Number two, the second thing the Lord wants to deal with very quickly is in the area of sicknesses and infirmities 
You know what sicknesses and infirmities are? Let me tell you. If you do not understand the assignment of sickness and infirmity, you will not value the healing ministry. The healing ministry is not just about showing that a man of God is powerful or showing that he has an anointing. You have to understand the purpose. What is the assignment of sickness and infirmity? I will tell you. Please look up. Let me show you the theology behind sickness and healing. Now, the Bible says that man is spirit. Don't forget that that spirit is hosted in a body that is made of earth, the material of his territory. Are we together now? And according to the law of God, every human being is only given the privilege of one body per lifetime. How many bodies? One body per lifetime. You are not given the liberty to have multiple bodies in the same lifetime. It is one body per lifetime. And Satan knows this. And the condition for your continuity in this realm is that your spirit cannot float indefinitely in the air. It becomes illegal like demons. That spirit must be resident within a body. So when Satan knows that for as long as your spirit is connected to your body, there is a basis of serving the Lord with this, your body. Remember the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says, a body has thou prepared for me. Bodies are so important that even when Moses died, Satan came to negotiate the body. What do you think he wanted to do? He wanted to put another spirit in a body that men had honored so much so he can mislead them. And Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. Watch this. Every time Satan puts sickness, do you know what he's trying to achieve? There is a law that your body must maintain a threshold health level for your spirit to be able to live in it. The moment your body is deteriorated beyond that threshold, the spirit will have to leave. Whether it happens by accident or it happens by some plague or it happens by damaging your body. Satan knowing this, help that woman. When Satan wants to destroy your destiny and cut short your life, you know what he does? He now introduces something that starts eating up your body. Organ by organ tissue by tissue doctors talk to us they start eating up the various aspects of your body you are alive but you know that the threshold level of health that allows your spirit to remain that means if god has planned 100 years for you to serve the purposes of god it is possible to live at 35 why because the remaining years satan subtracted it in destroying your body don't just claim long life you, that body must be vital and healthy. Some of you are seated here. You do not know that based on the sickness Satan has put, it's already minus 20 years to your life. Are you I just saw like I just saw like a like a cloud. This is what I just saw. As I just made that statement. Please sit down. We're going to pray. Every time sickness afflicts you, I want to assure you is the devil proposing death to your life. I don't care what you call it. High blood pressure, low blood pressure, headache, whatever it is. Now watch this. Another assignment of death. It leads me to the next point. Another assignment of death, especially in the times that we live in. Death comes, death, the devil has found out that death is one of the most, I mean a sickness, is one of the most effective tool for bringing poverty upon people. Many times the attack on your body is not about your body. It's an attack on your finances. Believe me when I tell you that no matter how blessed you are there is a kind of sickness and disease that can land upon your life even if you are a multi-millionaire in six months there are people that spend as much as five hundred thousand per week machines can diagnose conditions not spirits there is no machine that will tell you there is a wicked spirit that is in your body i know a gentleman they kept treating true story he would stand and sometimes just get dizzy and fall down and he went to the hospital and they said there's something that keeps depleting his blood i think the blood something that had to do 
I, I don't know what condition they call it now but the, the you know the quantity of blood required in his body and it was creating a reaction that was hurting him they transfused blood his poor widowed mother went to borrow money nah, that's what the devil likes when you start borrowing you transfuse that spirit comes to lick up that blood and the blood is gone again there are people who were never in debt until somebody got sick and before you know it they are now in debt of five million seven million and the person is not healed it's not about sickness it is a devourer eating up the future of your destiny are we together yes i once prayed for someone who they brought within two months this man began to deteriorate they said there was something wrong with his kidneys and then when they said please help them watch this now when he started deteriorating they said they had to travel to india with the exchange rate now everything in total they said they needed true story that they needed somebody to donate um donate his um help those outside please my god god is going to be doing mighty things this night that they needed somebody to donate his kidney the mother wanted to donate her they said no they now said um, i think they found somebody the person true story the person who would donate the kidney i don't know how much they 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 agreed on it's quite a serious price and then flying him down to india it was everything in total will be between maybe nine to twelve million a widow who has not even built her own house where if she gets 12 million is it to build a house or, or solve a problem and it's not like it's 100 percent guaranteed listen everything roaming around your body don't keep quiet this night can i tell you this watch this every sickness comes like a pregnant woman into your body if you allow it it will give birth to many things help this woman please in the name of jesus christ don't say my own is just headache i i, I got to know that it's headache don't say my own is just uh, something in my stomach refuse it this night it must give you to it. hallelujah hallelujah it was i think it was here in zaria not not we've had that case in abuja but it was in a miracle service here in zaria when many years ago when i prophesied to someone this woman or is it was it a gentleman went to bed and had a dream he saw a spirit holding a syringe and the spirit told him this is hiv injected him in the dream he woke up in the morning and started having signs of hiv some of you have been introduced to things in your system from dreams and the realm of the spirit you just know that you had a dream and spirit some of them dead people familiar spirits came to roam around your body help that lady please hold on let me finish up so that we can pray it will be a very quick walk this night so number one addressing the spirits that are behind limitations number two sicknesses and infirmities listen when we contend for long life it's not because of the fear of death by god's grace in life and in death we are victorious but you need this body to be able to fulfill the purposes of god I told you that for believers they do not die they sleep and the bible says they which sleep sleep at night if you want to come and force somebody to sleep in the day the most productive period of his life you must be a wicked person are we together they that sleep sleep at night number three the third area that god wants to sort out tonight is the area of finances please don't trivialize this area the area of finances now when we talk about finances it's a broad area because there are many principles i've done several teachings you can do well to listen there but i'm concerned about spirits that frustrate your productivity there is a prophetic dimension to wealth when we talk about finances we're not just talking about 
marketing the flesh and all of that let me tell you our world runs economically and if you are incapacitated economically whether you like it or not there are many needless problems in families that is finance that brought it demons didn't even have to do anything money was already representing them causing that problem suspicions among couple sincere people who love jesus but this money thing comes in between how about children who cannot go to good schools do you know i remember one time a woman i think she came here four children she had to choose one among the four who she can send to school and the remaining had to pay the price can i tell you most of the financial problems in our world today especially in africa and nigeria i submit to you it's not entirely because of laziness it's no longer a laziness issue because there are people who are hard working and diligent there are people who have gone to every seminar they have listened but there are spirits that are determined that having do you know the importance of having financial supplies i've taught you the purpose of money is for efficiency and time redemption if you do not have financial resources you cannot redeem time please listen to me the unit of destiny is time and anything that takes your time has taken a portion of your destiny the purpose of money is not just for buying houses and all of those things wonderful thank god for them but more than them god grants us access to the supplies of heaven as instruments of time redemption and to help you become efficient the last time I was in Zaria, I think it was January or so, I was taken to Graceland and I had the opportunity to go around um, some of the houses that were demolished. Now, I truly feel for them. I'm sure that some of you were sadly affected. And I began to think to myself, I said, my God, some of these people, it was with their total earnings, home and abroad, that they built this. I was told people collapsed. I don't know how true it is, but I was told literally there were people who collapsed because of what happened. Some people plunged into depression. Others had high blood pressure till today. Some even left Zaria and just went back to the village. Believers, we must redefine our understanding about wealth and prosperity now of course you will always find people who is just the marketing of the flesh money 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 just as if it is all about we are not we are talking about prosperity as a tool for time redemption and efficiency by the privilege of god's grace i am able to preach to you today and do what i do with integrity because among the many blessings god has been able to show mercy in that area imagine that as i came now as a man of god i'm thinking of my needs and saying how will i fuel my car now i will use the prophetic to manipulate you if i see 10 naira in your account even if it is a dead benefit of your father i will squeeze it out there are many men of god who did not start the way they are now it's poverty that turned them to become what they are and some of you are already following that path you may be filled with the holy ghost but compromise is already waiting for you can i tell you hunger always takes israel to egypt there is only one reason why israel god's covenant people go to egypt i've taught you genesis 42 verse 1 and 2 when there was hunger jacob and his sons they were people of covenant but because of hunger jacob told the sons he said why sit here and look at one another i have heard that there is corn in egypt he said go down theta verse 2 and buy for us so that we will eat and not die even a prophet will die when there is hunger hallelujah how can a man not have high blood pressure when a father over three or four children no school fees every other thing is increasing except your income high blood pressure used to be sickness for people in 50s and the rest now you see young people teenagers and even early 20s they tell you that they're having high blood pressure what are they thinking about because although the young boy is 21 the load he's carrying on his head is for a generation not even just for him out of a family of 10 people only one person manages to rise up getting a job of thirty let let's be honest how is he going to take care of 10 people plus the mother and the father and then satan now comes in with sickness and they tell you one drug one surgery is three hundred thousand, and that's even because there was somebody who you knew 
and that gentleman will start borrowing money please don't feel offended if i'm describing you god is here to sort us out there's this thing right now i'm even tired of praying for a lot of young people now there's this online uh this these applications that allow you to take loan whether you have collateral or not i cannot tell you the number of young people who are in trouble now because of that thing i don't know how it works it's like you you just find it every day i'm getting a text something i think that's how they write so they are pursuing somebody and they are informing you to help the person to tell the person to return the money that he he carried every day i don't know whether they give them my number or i don't know how the people find my number and you see a young boy accumulated that if that he even used it for something noble please when it's time to speak over your finances receive all receive all don't sit down and say it does not matter man of god you cannot do end time ministry with just character and revelation alone believe me you need financial empowerment from jesus if you are to go from city to city and preach jesus with integrity there are places that will invite you they don't have anything it's even you that will have to help them imagine me going to a place now and squeezing the people and saying everybody imagine as you are sitting now i was telling you yesterday or at the school of ministry i'm confusing school of ministry and we had a session this morning imagine that because i'm thinking of my needs now i'm happy to come to zaria because i think i can manipulate you you have carried problems to come and i'm passing an offering basket quietly i'm saying you better drop something if not i will not prophesy to you some things is not about being good or bad it's pressure when pressure pushes you you will be surprised what you can do are we together not too far where i live i think last year or year before last i think rain came and demolished one small church that they were building here till today they've not been able to lift that church maybe some of you even attended i don't know i thought about it and i said ah look at this poverty is not good though just settle it in your mind poverty is not good whatever has convinced you that poverty is a good thing it's not it's not it's a bad thing it can impede you and waste your time can i tell you being blessed will help you to be a blessing there are some of you you have parents at home you have loved ones at home some of them did not know the things that you know now but right now it is up to you to be able to find this key and say look i'm going to go and help mama and baba that the remaining days they have on earth let me give them the honor of living an honorable life before they see jesus some of you as you are seated now you are not picking the calls of your loved ones because you know that as soon as they call you they will first greet you and say please can you help me you see that i was told in the afternoon that the is it association of bike people they were so happy when they heard i was coming and those who do uh, um, this yes express they were happy because people were going to come now some most of them are not christians why are they rejoicing well maybe the holy spirit is working on them and convicting them but on the other hand i can assure you most of them are outside now following this thing do you know why because among the many things they may have the privilege for their children to eat well any man who cannot cater for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel and the devil knows that so he will squeeze away every opportunity and now unfortunately because of the attacks that we have been experiencing people cannot even rush and go to the farm in peace again because they don't know what can happen there you can be in the farm alone rejoicing and before you know it they don't see you again that means if we don't pray the devil is programming a very bad year for many people it may not be you it will not be you in the name of jesus so these are the three areas we receive by faith that as we begin to pray over don't wait to fall down this night take your eyes away from falling under the anointing and pray until this thing lands on your head can i tell you the truth do you know that in the midst of this for it, i was saying it yesterday and respectfully to our fathers 
and, and all our people here do you know that the economy of zaria largely runs on academics and education is that true that means that when there are students and when you know things are happening the people can get the money open their shops transport systems can have all of this every time there is a shutdown in the educational system in zaria everybody suffers There are some of our precious lecturers now who have not been paid for only God knows how long. There are other people who have not done, you know, nothing at all. A few that have the privilege of sending their children to private universities or private, even private schools. Some of our public schools now, there are some of the students, by the time they return back, their contemporaries have gone light years ahead of them. Please don't tell me poverty gives God glory. Are you ready to pray? When you insist and you are angry and you say, Lord, this must come to end in my life and in my family, I assure you that the God of heaven will, will arise for you. In the next two or three minutes, we are going to pray. Please, I'd like you to cry from the depth of your spirit and say, Father, visit me tonight. Visit me tonight visit me tonight this cannot continue like this someone pray this is the place of encounter do to me what you want this is the place of surrender This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you want. 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 That is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Someone pray, Lord enough is enough. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, every spirit that stands as an embargo limiting me, limiting my family, limiting my children by the blood of the eternal covenant i command you must give way now open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray every spirit every embargo over my life over my destiny by the blood of the eternal covenant the lord rebukes you please pray please pray In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you are still standing Acts chapter 12 Acts chapter 12 please media help us very quickly from verse 1 
Acts chapter 12. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Next verse. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. These were the days of the unliving bread. Verse 4. The Bible says, watch this. I want you to see a graphic picture of limitation. This was a man who was heralding the gospel. And the devil put him in prison. And not only in prison. The Bible says, they delivered four quaternions of soldiers to protect him. And then they bound him hand and foot again. Limitation. Verse 5. It says Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, he said the same night, like this night now, he was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers of the door that kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Watch this. He smote the Peter by his side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. This is where I'm going to now. And his chains fell off from his hands. Are you ready to pray? That every chain that has held my destiny, every chain that has held my family, in the name of Jesus, because light has come from heaven, I command be broken now. Somebody pray. Outside pray online pray chains of limitation chains of delay chains chains be broken be broken in the name of Jesus tying me down in one place be broken tying your ministry down tying your family down now look up hallelujah praise the Lord you have prayed. Let me pray for you now. We have to pray. Those chains, they must be broken now. I know that we don't have enough space, but we'll still work with what we have now. I want to pray. There are this embargo of limitation must tear down in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. As you shout that name, hear me. Anybody here who is a victim of this cause, an embargo of limitation, that fire from heaven must land upon your life. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cost those chains. Bring them out now. In the name of Jesus. Chains, limitations, limiting spirits, spirits of ancestry, foundational spirits, tying down the destinies of people. Release them now. Release them now! Release them now! Bring them out! Inside and outside. I'm praying for you now. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing the right hand. Just the right hand of many people with chains on it. This is what I'm saying. Father, I decree and declare. Everyone here who should have gone further than he has gone. And yet, Abakatosh Kataba. Bring them out. I command that chain be broken now. 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 Bring them out. Now hear me. I'm going to pray for you. 
you are going to represent your families right now because if you are free and your loved ones are not free you are still in bondage he said as for me and my house are you ready to pray ah. please bring them out i'm just seeing fire falling on people and the lord is bringing is, is a total deliverance right now i pray every family here that is under the cause of ancestry spirits of foundation covenant at the count of three may that fire rest upon you now one two three be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now Tying down lives, tying down destinies, tying down families. I'm seeing something leaving this lady. My dear, look at me. Tap her. No, this other one. That's right. I'm seeing an angel pouring something. Something is leaving her. Let it go now. I command it to leave you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every altar speaking over every family here. Altars, whether in the village, Parakatapatia, altars connected to the six geopolitical regions in Nigeria. Hear me, I speak as one sent from God. Every altar that will not let you go, I command that it catches fire now. Hallelujah. Who is Godia? We don't have the time, but let's see what God can help us do. I'm hearing a name, Godia. Who is that? You are a woman, not just a young lady. Godia, who is that? Please, if, if, I, if, if the prophetic word is not for you, please don't embarrass yourself. You can just sit down there. Godia, we want to pray. Shabbatoskatibala. Listen, there is someone here, your problem started from the dream. The realm of the dream. You lay down and you saw yourself taken to an old house. It's a house you had left a long time ago. You had left a long time ago. And from that day when you woke up, it was failure after failure. I'm praying for you now. The power of God is coming on. I don't know who that person is. Bring them out right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I decree and declare, right from the realm of the Spirit, where your problems came from, be delivered now. 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 Sing that song for me. is visiting your family in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands everything that has to do with witchcraft i break it right now i break it right now i break it right now i release you from this embargo you will not die the dreams you are having and seeing dead people i cancel that dream now hallelujah hold on please i'm seeing a coffin this is what i'm seeing this is the spirit of the dead. I want to cause that spirit right now. I'm seeing coughing. This is what I'm seeing. Oh, death, where is your sting? It says. And no grave, where is your victory? There are families here and individuals. The devil is trying to program death. 
whether by accident by terrorism right now i want to pray the power of god will come upon them bring them out father at the count of three as you shout that name jesus every covenant with death looking for you or your loved ones it must go are you ready inside or outside father visit your people and let there be a separation between them and this spirit one two three shout jesus spirit of death let them go spirit of death let them go i cross you by the god of heaven release their families now let me pray for all those who are out here every devil of darkness we stand as the church of the lord jesus christ and we declare that your time and your reign is up by the blood of the eternal covenant release god's people now at the count of three one two three go go out of their lives right now release their lives and their destinies never to return return everything you stole from them and everything you stole from their families in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the final prayer and we'll go to healing these are the three things i'll focus on this night the lord is showing me i'm seeing like a gate that leads you know how estates are a gate that leads to an estate and i'm seeing that gate locked we're dealing with limitations the lord wants me to open that gate now listen i know what the lord is showing me there are many of you the the passage for you to have a triumphant entry is not there because that gate is closed. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Some of you will be surprised at this prayer the kind of gates and doors that will open because for some of you you are so your family members are long supposed to be more than this level right now but there are gates i stand by this rod of the apostolic and prophetic and i decree and declare right now gates be open in the name of jesus help them help them bring them out gates be open in the name of Jesus. Gates, be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Open for individuals. Open for families. Open for businesses. Open for ministries. The prophet Isaiah said, Your gates shall be continually open. It says they will not be short day or night so that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. You are this King of glory, you're the Lord strong and mighty, you're the Lord mighty and mighty, amen. Hallelujah. Please bring two ladies outside, we're hurrying up, we have to walk with time. I just saw light, the power of God is coming on two ladies. The Lord is saying he's bringing mighty deliverance. This is not just for them, for their families, they're in overflow. Why? The power of God is coming upon them right now. A mighty wind of the Spirit of God. Bringing deliverance for those families. Now in the next one minute, I'd like you to pray. 
and say everywhere i should enter i declare that i'm entering now i'm moving forward i'm making progress everyone open your mouth and declare between now and may i prophesy by the spirit of god by that command i declare an exodus out of egypt out of egypt someone declare the door is open i am matching it the king of glory strong and mighty hallelujah now look up please please look up we're about to finish with this issue of limitations but look up let me share with you a mystery when it was time for jesus to have what we call the triumphant entry he could not enter jerusalem on foot and here was the instruction he said go to a place where the streets divide you will see a cold where no man had ridden upon he said lose it and if they ask you tell them the master had need of it that means for your triumphant entry there are times you can't go alone there are provisions that need to come but the devil will ask you why is this favor coming tell them the master had need of it it's time for me to have a triumphant entry and the horse that i must mount upon is a right prosperously because of truth are you ready to pray father everything i need to make advancement and progress in my life i receive right now by faith open your mouth and begin to pray everything i need everything i need someone is praying go to the place where the reef where the cities the roads divide you will find a coat that no one had ridden on if they ask you tell them the master had need of it hallelujah for all those in front here i decree and declare every devil and every spirit that has oppressed you by the power that raised christ from the dead be delivered now in the name of jesus be delivered now that wicked spirit must let you go must let your family members go in the name of jesus christ release them now in the name of jesus you lose your hold over them for the bible says he who the son sets free is free indeed in jesus name i pray amen and amen is there a woman here that they call mama deborah i just had that name in my spirit mama deborah i'm about to pray for the stick now mama deborah i don't know whether that's you have a daughter called deborah or they call you who is that person please what's your deborah. they call you mama deborah yes, sir. where are you from madam enugu state, enugu state. Yes, i want to pray for you this demonic embargo that has tied you down there i don't know what it is that has to do with the spirit of the dead don't be a, i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you and pray for your children you don't have to kneel father in the name of jesus christ i pray for mama by the power that oh mommy can you imagine mommy you you, you actually came all the way from abuja to zaria here amazing amazing for those of you who followed on on um on sunday this was a woman who was giving testimony wearing white all white all the way here i'm going to pray for you too in the name of jesus i decree and declare that devil and that spirit he must let you go right now by the power that raised christ from the dead everything you have to do with the spirit of the dead let it go now in the name of jesus christ let it go now in the name of jesus christ let it go now in the name of jesus christ and mama i pray for you i also pray for the photo you are holding you don't have to come in the name of jesus 
I decree and declare the Lord is bringing deliverance to your children. Everywhere they are around the world, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is touching them now. In Jesus' name I pray. 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 You will be surprised to see what begins to happen to your life as a result of these limitations going. Hallelujah. Some of you, doors that have been closed for a very long time, you will be surprised to see. You will know the doors have opened because those who have not called you for years, all of a sudden someone will reach you and reconnect with relationships again. Who is this? Why is she here? Huh? Madam? You are the Mama Deborah? And yes. that's the, okay. I will still pray for you. Let's, let's just do it quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, you too, my dear. It, by the, okay, let's just, let's just do a general prayer. I'm not saying you, you don't have to bring children whose names are Deborah. Please understand the word. Let me just pray for them. Mama, it's okay, it's okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mothers and I pray for this, our wonderful children. Everything that does not represent God in your life by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I curse it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that you must go free. Ah, this lady, what, my, what do you do for her? Uh, as my daughter, you know where, ma? Since the last week, in the dream, say somebody come. I just saw her and I saw something just lit. So I don't spend money for this for medicine. He said somebody is somebody come from like a, a bed. They fly, fly, fly. He go buy them and go back since that time since last week. This guy no fever. If he start to cough now, you cough no go stop. The guy don't spend money for this. You know what? You know what? I pray for you. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I release you right now from the influence of every spirit. I set you free by the blood of the eternal covenant. Every grip that any spirit has over you, I declare that it loses its hold over you. Be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. And every strange spirit roaming around anyone's life and anyone's body, I declare be delivered right now in the name of Jesus Christ be delivered right now in the name of Jesus let me pray for the sick very quickly I believe in the healing power of Jesus I want to pray for the sick right now If we can do that in 10 minutes um, I believe in the healing ministry and I believe in the power of Jesus to heal because of time um, ordinarily we we'll just distribute our people and have them lay hands lay their hands on all the people who are sick I want you to know that Jesus still heals he can heal you of every infirmity now we're going to do this very quickly we have just about 10 minutes to do this very quickly there are so many people across all the overflows here's what i'm going to ask you to do now um if you're trusting god for a miracle we'll just use four overflows any extra overflows we'll just ask them to join so we'll do overflow this one and then overflow um two overflow one overflow two across the road then we'll do overflow three any other extra overflow you can join overflow two or three or one as the protocol will help you um, so that we'll do it fast we'll just lay hands we have to finish I'm trusting God that will not exceed nine o'clock so that we will leave it has to be a very very quick one ordinarily I would have just declared over your life but just to give that opportunity please all those laying hands just touch them just a contact by the power of God and then um, it is a means of reaching you so that you will receive the life and the power of Jesus while that is happening we'll be praying in the spirit and as we're praying for the sick now is the time to be submitting your prayer requests 
for those who are following online if you are yet to submit your prayer request you can write down your prayer request very quickly i'll give you a minute or two if you are yet to pen down your request please write it quickly because the ushers pr you can also join them they'll be collecting your prayer requests and then um we'll collate it immediately when we pray for the sick we're going to be ministering here and then we'll be declaring over please make sure you stay till the end because we're going to be making prophetic declarations over zaria declaring the peace of god across the land so all those who are trusting god for healing right now um especially within here within the auditorium may i request that you move out and come and stand now we'll be laying hands on you overflow one please quickly to the front of your projector overflow two the same thing be careful be careful be careful you don't have to please there's order in the house of god the bible says everything should be done decently and in order hallelujah now overflow one you can come out to your projector stand overflow two move to your your led screens all other overflows you can go to overflow three or just distribute them we'll have some of our leaders will just distribute them there and it will be a very 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 quick one once hands are laid on you you return back and even if you are not coming out submit your prayer request and be in the mood of prayer you're praying and trusting god um for all the leaders and everybody please in the next 10 minutes from now we must be done no matter how long just lay your hands and 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 um let's do it very fast just a touch we're operating under a corporate anointing so we'll do it very fast um benga and benga and abiodu will do overflow one outside and um kenny isaac and promise let's do three of you go to overflow three and then um we'll do who is who is available again we'll do um or no what will happen is when who is doing overflow one abiodu no let's do benga I will plead with Dr. Anointed to join you, Benga, so that he can help us out. We'll do overflow one, and then Abiodun, you and um, you and Pastor Femi will do overflow three. Then Ima, please join them at overflow three. Then the extra overflows, Pastor Dangana, please, I will request you to join. Just find any of the overflows that are vacant and join them. And we're going to trust God for that grace, even though I know that our fathers are here and they are a bit tired. But I am also going to plead with our father, Pastor Abubakar, at least to represent the fathers. All of you here, he's going to be laying hands, just a touch. I want you to believe in the healing power of God so that we can finish just in the main auditorium here. We're going to pray. And as that hand comes upon you, I want you to believe. Worship team, you will help us, you will guide us. Whatever you want to sing, whoever, just worship with us and please everybody make sure you are sensitive make sure you are praying we'll be laying hands on you myself and pastor abubakar will be handling in here and all the other ministers father we go in this corporate anointing and in the name of jesus we decree and declare that you will show us mercy just a touch and you believe by faith in jesus name let's go please 10 minutes we have exactly 10 minutes to finish yes please there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every turn, break every turn. There is power. Break every chain. Break every chain. So 
If you are yet to submit your prayer request, please let's do that in the next one minute. Stretch your hands to this altar and I'd like you to begin to declare by faith the Egyptians that I see today. In the name of Jesus, I see them no more forever. Is someone praying? We're standing under the corporate anointing and declaring. Your prayer request written here is the most accurate representation of your desires. And the Bible says, what things soever ye desire, it said, when ye pray that you believe that thou receivest it, Someone is praying outside. One more minute for those who are here to drop their request. Please, if you are bringing it, hurry up. Please hurry up. Those following online, here is your chance to connect by faith right now. All the overflows connect by faith. We are praying. I will bow my knees and pray. You don't have to kneel. Let me do the kneeling for you. Someone is praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Egyptians I see today, I see them no more forever. Don't be silent. Pray, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this area of concern, it must let me go now. You are taking away limitations by the power of your spirit. Restoring my body. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. By the anointing, the power that raised Christ from the dead, we decree and declare. Pray one more minute. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare. This request will never have to be written again. I overcame. Hallelujah. You won the victory. Hallelujah. Help me kiss me. He said his feelings. To the mountain, connect by faith. I overcame. Say to the problem, you came to me. Tell that statement right now. I already won. Declare and hold me.
Please release your faith as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please shout a believing amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stand under the various graces that I here represented. And as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up this request before the throne. And we declare that these Egyptians you see today, in Jesus' name, may you see them no more forever. These Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Every human agent that must partner with the Holy Spirit to grant the answers to this request, we compel them to partner with God in Jesus' name. And anyone who is in partnership with Satan that says over his dead body for you to see God lifted, may the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just felt stirred to do this. Just give me five more minutes and we'll be done. But um, there are some of these are people that I just felt led to pray for. I know that all of you are gra gradually finding expression, but um, Sam, Jimmy, David Dam, Jake's injury, case strings, come. Let me pray for you. Let me tell you this. The first teaching I started with is called limitation. These guys are gifted and talented people. But you see, it takes more than just trying to market yourself and trying to push. If God does not announce you, you will just waste your time. For some of you, God has started giving you visibility. My counsel for you, do ministry with integrity. Exalt money. Exalt um, Jesus more than money, more than fame. The problem with a lot of music ministers is the moment God leads them and they start having priority living, they forget about the Jesus that raised them and get into this mundanity of celebrity lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with honor, but let me tell you, when your honor pushes away the cross and you become the central focus, you are already dead, even if you are still in ministry. I hope you know there are two ways of leaving the throne. You can still be sitting on the throne whereas David has been anointed. Just because you are sitting on the throne does not mean you are on the throne. It is dangerous to be there and yet heaven does not see you as the person there. So my dear people, many have come before you. Others were foolish and they did not listen. They crash landed. Others were wise and maintained this. And this is a message to everyone. When God begins to lift you, please take the time. Do not forget where you are. I don't care how far you rise make sure that you be, you supervise yourself and say but for his grace i will not be where i am now it is the assignment of those who are impressed by your life to clap for you it is your assignment to draw from the memory of your pain to say lord it was a long journey between me and you i will not throw it just for nothing are we together the higher you rise the easier it is to crash down and the greater the crash if you fall from these stairs it does not harm you but if you fall from this crane, you may not live to tell the story. The key is humility. I repeat, humility. Beware of some of these things on social media that you learn this celebrity lifestyle. Wonderful. Enjoy the blessings of God. But let me tell you, in the kingdom, our assignment is to project Jesus as we rise. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? The key is to project Jesus. I believe in every one of you and as far as my own part is concerned god will keep helping and will keep giving them visibility and i know that there are others coming you are there who we'll announce your ministry to good time but let me tell you please support their ministry and what they represent don't invite them and just give them transport money if you are not ready listen to their albums if you are in, in inviting them please do well to honor them don't make it easy for them to be tempted some of these people, as God is lifting them, and be careful. Don't bring any mentality of classmate and say we used to know ourselves. When God honors somebody and you know, respect the person for that. Because we do this a lot. When you know people, when they are rising, even when God has helped them, you will still want to demean them and downplay them again. 
you don't have to do that but gentlemen i know that god is lifting you keep loving jesus so value your secret place more than ministration when invitations become greater than your secret place you will die eventually this is a message for everyone the higher you rise the more you learn to close deafen your ears there is a healthy reception of the applause of men but satan can join men and clap so loud that you will not hear the voice of god again until you crash land you will not die in the name of jesus we agree as the church of the lord jesus christ that god will open you up he will grant you access to the nations find favor may this grace that leads men lift you receive songs from heaven you will not be lazy by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ may you not be lazy your families will not suffer in the name of jesus and let me tell you any mundane ministerial association tempting you to join them for your destruction will separate you from them because i respectfully tell you there are many people who are supposedly gospel ministers who are not christians i'm not condemning i'm just telling you the truth are we together the pursuit for money the pursuit for fame who is better than who who sang more than who you can't serve jesus that way that applies to preachers too if you're a preacher here this competitive mindset who preach more than who who is anointed that is not your assignment your assignment is to preach jesus crucified as he lifts you as he grants you the privilege to rise you open up your heart and serve him because there are some of you who have been you are opening yourself for all kinds of demonic mentorships your little prayer group your little this and you are fighting everybody except you some of you will come to church and because of the little revelation you can't listen to any man of god again he's preaching you are editing what he's saying this man mm -mm, mm -mm. if you think the man if you can't learn revelation from the man learn character if you can't learn character learn administration if there is nothing to learn learn endurance hallelujah so let me encourage you any revelation that makes you dishonor especially a senior man of god a father who has gone ahead of you because you think you are knowing more be careful oh that is the devil deceiving you many have followed that path and crash landed in shame hallelujah yesterday i gave our fathers an opportunity to speak over our lives if you are not here yesterday go and get the teaching and listen to it from the depth of your heart but for these people whether in zaria here or wherever please honor them please honor them when you see them honor them as touching what god has given them if you are inviting them to come and minister please do well don't take them for granted we at as little as you can even if it is to package something you know honoring a number of them here are family people they will not carry your your greetings and take it to their wives and their families are we together in the church of the lord jesus christ we have to encourage our people too so that they don't start jumping to go into secular whatever it is so when the church as for me i will keep encouraging you as best as i can and i know there are some of you who are saying apostle have you not seen me don't worry jesus is seeing you what i'm saying applies to you too do ministry with integrity and rise going around announcing yourself and say i am there is the recipe for disaster don't forget that the people you want to invite you also know jesus if he does not speak to them they will never invite you and then the more god begins to open doors the more the expectations are higher it means you have to trust god and write songs writing one song per year you'll be ready for empty pews because it is both ministry and an industry you must know how to thrive in both are we together both ministry instrumental is you too learn what you can learn don't be lazy and sit back and say it doesn't matter i'm better than this person no challenge yourself this applies to those of you in business too oh apostle i can cook who is eating your food until kings patronize you don't rest keep rising are we together yes oh i'm making zobo i'm making puff puff i'm making chin chin congratulations but have you gotten to a level where kings will be proud to call you the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon may kings look for you in the name of jesus stretch your hands in one minute thank you for your patience let's pray for this my dear people lord help them lord help them they have songs to write they have dimensions of grace to go to you have taken off some of them to the nations 
you are beginning to give them visibility lord the spirit of rebellion let it be out of them the spirit of arrogance pride carnality let it be out of them grant them the grace to fear you seriously the spirit of laziness and complacency let it be out of them in the name of jesus may your songs become the anthem of revival across nations and in the name of jesus every blessing that comes with service honor wealth riches may god grant it unto you let all those who are connected to you be proud of you and for those of you who are in the cave of adulam god is training you the endurance to stay there don't graduate yourself and expect your world to know you paul a man approved of god not approved of yourself you can respect yourself but you don't honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ god bless you please celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah now you would notice when i'm not around um benga isaac and pastor femi they have been the ones here doing a marvelous job please come let me pray for them three of you that god will increase them and help them the work listen the work of the ministry cannot be done in the strength of the flesh some of you you are older than them some of them you know them they are not perfect they are humans are we together that every time any of them or anybody at all we have a leaders meeting tomorrow and we are, we are already working at building other leaders you see the the greatest joy of a leader is not to be a superstar is that god helps you to raise other people too are we together now these people have been diligent they have served they shuttle between abuja and um zaria risking themselves on the road it is a sacrifice they deserve your honor in whatever capacity whether it's to sow into their lives pray for them especially and encourage them don't make this work difficult for them and some of you who is only apostle that you listen to you are hypocrites if you only listen or come for koinonia when i'm here that means you don't believe in jesus christ because listen the message is greater than every messenger including what makes us great is the message we carry not just who we are hallelujah please stretch your hands in one minute and pray for these dear people lord help them lord help them help them pray for isaac pray for benga pray for femi there are many other leaders too that serve in various capacities lord help them help them grant them grace they will do ministry with integrity take away pride take away competition take away vain glory from them in the name of jesus christ take away pride take away vain glory take away seditions party spirits i am for this i am for that lord that they will serve you in righteousness they will serve you in truth may they be men of the altar men of prayer men of fire men of grace that the work of the lord in zaria will not die in the name of jesus and that through their watch god will raise other people too in the name of jesus christ may god himself shift them to new levels i impart grace upon you in the name of jesus christ the honor that god has given me let it work for you the results that god has given let it work for you the grace upon our fathers here even as we have received by the privilege of grace let it work for you in the name of jesus christ and i pray that everything in your hand grows you will not die on the road you will not die in the air no kidnapper will pick you up in the name of jesus christ may god raise people to support you they will stand by you the things others are looking for god will give to you and anybody that fights you goes down instantly in the name of jesus christ now hear me we are wrapping up tomorrow i leave but let me encourage you let there be unity there are many of you here that are men of god there are three things do not allow to happen to you number one believing you are the only one god is using already that is an attack if you ever get to a point where you believe joshua selman you are the only one god is using you are already in deception you must embrace the corporate ministry of the body i taught you this yesterday number two respect and honor for elders and fathers it is true that spiritually speaking we are at different levels but you have seen me honor the fathers here in secret and in open it's not something that i pretend to do no 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 no. god sees my heart and they know that i honor them no matter where i rise to no matter what i become i honor them with all my heart 
I had the honor of meeting uh, my director and principal then in the seminary. When I saw him, I got down on my knees and I honored him. I blessed him with a seed and according to him, he was almost in tears. He said in his entire life, nobody had ever blessed him like this. And I told him that no matter what we become today, it is your training. Is they say no matter how high an Iroko tree or whatever it is, it can never, what there's a saying or one, one kind of thing that has to do with an Iroko tree. No matter how you rise and you grow, somebody nourished you to grow. Are we together? Because some of you are already dishonoring, especially our fathers. I've spoken to you about CGC. 11 years getting to 12 years, they have helped us to serve Jesus. It is from this place that through their influence, God and us. If God is putting a program, even if you will not attend, God can put something in your heart and say, please come and sow. This is our contribution. Are we together? There are people who have helped the body of Christ in this city that are deserving of honor. Dr. Anointed is here. He and Dr. Tende. You may not know, many of you, before you came to Zaria, God used these people, especially Reverend Tende. He is behind the rising of so many people. Right from Rema to Oasis to Father's Delight. Everybody you see that God has helped. You may not exactly agree with everything doctrinally. It is too small a reason to dishonor anyone. You see our fathers here in church. Don't go to church and see a man doing what he's doing and say, what is this one saying? Reject that spirit. Keep growing as much as God has granted you grace. But please, when it has to do with honor, honor them. Honor these fathers. Honor our mothers. If you honor the father and leave the mothers, you are hypocrites. Are we together now? You see me greet and honor our mothers. They are deserving of your honor. You see them carrying something on their head, even in the market. If you can collect it, collect it. Don't say I'm too big. I'm a... This is what a lot of people do. That's why they don't last. Are we together? God grants you grace to sow into their lives, sow into their lives. So also the heads of department. We have leaders meeting tomorrow, so I will not uh, go into that. Please honor them. Don't say I am old. It's not. If it's by age, some of us will not be here. You see. But it is by the election of grace. And I can tell you, I have learned humility from our fathers here. I used to think that I was a humble person till I met every one of these fathers. I tell you, in spite of their pedigree and their achievements, they have humbled themselves and I love them from the depth of my heart. And what you will not do for me, please don't do for these people. Are we together? Those of you who have prayer groups, evangelistic outreaches take this message of honor back to your people because some of them are boiling with prayer fire and already they are going to enter hell fire with the way they are behaving don't criticize them but tell them my friend in addition to this don't criticize them because when people are rising allow them to make mistakes too people make mistakes and grow don't overly flog out on people that is is still i tell fathers this is better for your sons to fail in your presence let you see them in your lifetime and you can correct them than the one that you are long gone and then your work suffers because of the carelessness of ill preparedness so many of you that god has granted grace in your own regard please be patient with those who they will make mistakes but help them but in helping them let them know that a balanced christianity is a lasting one don't exaggerate prayer against the word don't exaggerate the word against prayer don't exaggerate the quest for prosperity against the passion for God. And don't neglect all this in your bid to seek God. There is a balance. This is what we represent. Pray for the church in Zaria. You hear that a group is putting a little program, provided it is Jesus they are serving. In your little way, even if you can't attend, you can contribute something. And beware of those who cause division among the body of Christ. We don't need this at this time again. Are we together? In one minute, let's pray for the church in Zaria as we wrap up. Go ahead and pray. Wherever you are, Father, we pray. It doesn't matter the denomination. It doesn't matter the differences that we have from a doctrinal standpoint. It doesn't matter the imperfections and the limitations. Lord, help your body to grow and mature. And we cry, oh God. Those outside, are you praying? Those online. Pray for all the fathers of faith in the land. Lord, help them. May they be men and women of character, integrity. May they love Jesus. Pray for all the groups. Pray for yourself. Lord, let me be a contributor to the growth of the body of Christ. Pray for Koinonia. That Koinonia Zaria will remain a beacon of light, shining and blazing the light of Jesus. 
and like we did yesterday let's pray one more time for zaria lord the spirit of bloodshed terrorism i hear that there was a, a bit of uprising in the town earlier today in the name of jesus we decree and declare the sound of war and bloodshed will not be heard in our borders are you agreeing in the name of jesus christ that zaria will remain a, a, a habitable place muslims and christians will coexist together in love and any spirit that wants to bring division we cast it away in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead for in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray now everybody please whilst you are standing if you can i'm going to speak over your life all workers please remember that we have a very early morning meeting all workers please it is compulsory 7 a.m on the dot right here at cgc we'll just have an hour or two time of housekeeping appraisal and impartation before i depart so please do well all workers be sure to be here by this announcement after the grace please um let there be minimal scene of people so that everybody can go home and rest for tomorrow praise the name of the lord but there are people here right now some of you came from far some of you came from near overflow one overflow two overflow three the extension down to second equa you are saying apostle i believe in jesus but right now i have backslidden spiritually and i need restoration because of the absence of maybe heightened spiritual activities in zaria something has happened to me i need restoration or you are here you are saying apostle I've been around the things of church but I have never truly made this decision from the depth of my heart we have one minute for you wherever you are you are in the, in the main auditorium overflow one and overflow two make your way to the front here and come and stand before me quickly shepherd of my soul keep coming I give you full control wherever you may lead me I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Two, are you coming? Let's celebrate them as they come. Young and old, come. It's time to give Jesus everything. You can sit back there, but let me tell you the truth. If you know that if the trumpet sounds this night, you are not going to heaven, make your way to the front. It's time to make it right with Jesus. Whether you are rededicating your life to Jesus or you are starting afresh, you don't have to kneel. Please stand so that there will be space. We have one more minute for you. Please let them in quickly. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Over, overflow three and all the other, other, other flows all the other overflows please move to the front of your led screen young and old please come male female jesus is calling some of you are saying apostle i've not done anything wrong but i can't remember giving my life to jesus join them you are not saved join them in the name of jesus so there is something called the assurance of salvation hallelujah in jesus name now i truly appreciate every one of you for the courage to come some of you are rededicating your hearts to jesus some of you are making this decision for the first time it is the noblest decision that every man can make on this side of god's kingdom may i request please if you are joining them please join them quickly we're about to pray overflow three and all the other overflows and those following across the globe any nation any continent any territory jesus is calling you he's calling you to come home and it's time for you to win that war of your destiny in jesus name May I request all of you in front, please lift your right hand high above your head and say this loud and clear. Jesus is here. I am only representing him. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I make Jesus Christ my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, 
of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life i am a recipient of eternal life and from this night and forever i declare that i am a child of god i am saved i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you these people have come there is nobody who can come to you except you draw them by your spirit lord i thank you for bringing every one of them young and old male female together i thank you because they are making this noble decision many handing their lives to you for the first time others rededicating their lives and destinies father you have declared through scripture that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away therefore i decree and declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven in the name of jesus the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i declare that you are recipients of the life of god beginning from tonight you walk in the newness of life you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray congratulations to every one of you um praise the lord now please let me request i'd like you to turn back um you will see a gentleman and a lady they are waving their hands please follow them accordingly they will lead you there will be a group of counselors to receive you just for a minute have your details and you'll be back koinonia let's celebrate them as they go let's celebrate them as they go we believe you are mightily blessed to connect with the ministry and get more from apostle joshua selvan follow us on facebook and twitter at Koinonia ENI to stream Koinonia live. Go, go to mixella.com forward slash Koinonia hyphen radio and download the teachings on koinoniadownloads.org. For questions and inquiries, sure call 0814 721 4444 or 0907 Sit down. The multimedia will play the intro and immediately after the multimedia intro the next voice you will hear is that of God's choice servant Apostle Joshua Selman he's been with us yes and it was powerful this morning was powerful tonight is powerful he's leaving tomorrow <laughs> so those of you that are missing morning session if you like keep missing they play yeah they play <laughs> don't come for morning session you'll be missing plenty this morning was something else tomorrow morning another dimension praise god multimedia over to you let me tell you the truth those who run are those who wait it's a mystery in this kingdom the secret of speed is to master the art of waiting this is the secret behind the grace and the glory of great men. Those who seem to be running at a speed that cannot be explained are people who have mastered the art of the altar. They know the value of waiting until his word comes. Apostle Joshua Selman is the president of Eternal Network International, ENI, a Christian-based organization headquartered in Abuja, Nigeria. He is the set man of the weekly service called Koinonia, Widely known for his sincere love and passion for the body of Christ, his meetings are characterized by great and unusual presence and moves of the Holy Spirit, miracles, healings, signs and wonders, working miracles and deliverance. Apostle Selman is a carrier of the strange presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The teachings of Apostle Selman are timely, anointed and balanced. They have become a major tool for revival in the lives of individuals and ministries in many nations of the world. With Jesus draw in our heart and the shout of praise in our mouth, let's make welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal 
the glory of the reason Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known Reveal the glory of I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit and just ask the Lord for a very definite encounter given by his spirit tonight whether you're inside outside following online I'd like you to pray someone is praying Reveal your glory, mighty dimensions tonight. Just one minute, cry out your heart to your King, your Maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are many spirits, but there is only one spirit, the spirit of the Lord, that is able to give men liberty. That you know he is there because there must be liberty. I don't know what area you are trusting God to visit tonight, but I want you to turn it into a desperate prayer. Father, visit me. Visit me. Someone is praying. The Bible says that everyone that asketh receiveth. For in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray Father, visit us by your spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let every closed door be opened. Rewrite the stories of men. And we pray that Jesus will be glorified in our midst. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. God bless you. Please be seated just for a moment. And let your heart be opened because indeed when god is in a place he's there to do us good um thank you again thank you so much sir and your dear wife and the entire leadership for this opportunity to be a blessing to god's people i just want to charge our hearts very quickly and then we begin to pray what should we expect tonight the move of the spirit in all its diverse manifestations bringing healing bringing deliverance rewriting the stories of men you read about men who had an encounter with the god of the bible and their lives changed a weak man like gideon had an encounter with the lord and he became a valiant man who could command an army to even defeat the midianites the bible is full of ordinary people who at the instance of their encounter with the God of heaven, Saul became Paul. Is that true? Abraham became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. May God rewrite someone's story tonight. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you missed any of the previous sessions, let me request that you do well 
to find out how to get the teachings and listen um, because it gives perspective to what God is doing tonight. I am convinced that every time God puts together a prophetic meeting such as this, there are at least five things that must be experienced in that meeting as an attestation that God visited his people. Let me run through them very quickly. Number one, there must be encounters. Any meeting that is God ordained must have encounters. What is an encounter? I told you yesterday that an encounter is a supernatural experience that makes God real to you. That makes God real to you. A supernatural experience even by the Spirit of God that makes God real to a man. Number two, in any God-ordained meeting, there must be transformation. 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 Hallelujah. There is a lady here. I just saw a vision. The power of God is going to begin to come on you and there is a prophetic mantle that has been looking for you for a very long time. This is what God is revealing to me. I don't know who that lady is. There is a call of God upon your life. This is not just an empty. This is not just a gift of prophecy. There is the call of God. And this impartation is going to begin a season of very strange dealings in the spirit. Until you emerge a woman of power in the spirit. Now, I don't know where that lady is, but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I stir up that prophetic fountain. Help the lady. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. A new wine coming upon a new wine skin. A new dimension even by the Spirit of God. Let the door of a new prophetic season be opened up to you. A door of a new prophetic season be opened up to you. Because God is looking for men and even women whom he will use. Even though this word is for a particular lady, we declare let the prophetic fountains be stirred up. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I like you to be sensitive this is not just some jamboree of a preacher this is God attending to the needs and the cries of people the needs and the cries of people hallelujah because some of you he brought you to this conference is a kingdom conference so that you will have that staring of the spirit even by the Spirit of God now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit i feel fire on my hands and this is an impartation of the healing anointing there are many people here part of the grace you are about to contact i'm seeing the number 14 one four i don't know where they are but i stretch my hands may that grace find you right now I ignite that fire in the name of Jesus you will watch the wonder walking miracle walking power of the Spirit please help them through your hands and through your life in the name of Jesus of these 14 people wherever you are I stretch my hands let there be that ignition right now and a pouring of that Spirit upon you upon your ministry you will never be the same in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Fire is burning in this place. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, that you will never be the same again. 
the fire that burns the old and opens you up to the new i release that fire upon you i release it upon your altar i release it upon your destiny the fire that burns away the old and brings in the new in the name of jesus christ there is a man of god here i don't know who you are but there's been extreme struggle in ministry this is spiritual attack it looks like you entered a season and everything just dried up in your life in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of the living god I speak to that man of God wherever you are by the anointing of the Holy Ghost let that which was dead come back to life now let that which was dead come back to life now let that which was dead as touching the call of God upon your life come back to life now in the name of Jesus Christ Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth 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 Let it cover Hallelujah So I said please be seated that in every god ordained meeting just help those under the anointing and then i like you to please be sensitive in every god ordained meeting number one there must be encounters as we have so lavishly experienced in the course of this conference number two there must be transformation if a meeting is certainly god ordained there must be transformation and that by the word of god number three in every god ordained meeting there must be the move of the spirit to heal to deliver and to bring supernatural solutions to god's people healing and deliverance is not the only thing god's people need they need supernatural solutions solutions that answer to the real issues that plague their lives Many people may not realize the kinds of sacrifice that God's people make in the midst of their pain, financial issues, health issues, demonic oppression, issues with career. And when they come to Jesus, there must be an opportunity for him by his spirit to show up and provide supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Number four, there must be impartation impartation the transference activations and transference of graces hallelujah because one of the many things that the spirit of god seeks to achieve in conferences like this that is why he allows for the convergence of several people carrying several graces is that these dimensions be distributed across his body so that people who came here without certain possibilities working in their lives can access the great dimensions of those possibilities that they desire this is true and finally there must be an opportunity for fellowship fellowship according to psalm 133 behold how good and pleasant it is the bible says when brethren dwell together in unity it likens it to the oil that comes upon the head of aaron the priest 
down to his bed to his garment to his skirt he says for there in that state not just the place in that state god has commanded the blessing even life forevermore hallelujah and we thank god because these are the things that we've been experiencing in this place and i respect the fact that supremacy has been given to the word of god the sound communication of god's word to build our hearts i just want to charge our hearts um our time is fast spent i don't intend to keep us longer than the time allotted the bible says in matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 he says we are the salt of the earth jesus is teaching now and he began to teach the disciples and he said ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt has lost its sever its saltiness he says wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men then he says next verse that ye are the light of the world he calls you a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that position it cannot be hidden then he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick or a lampstand and the bible says it giveth light to how many if you are light you give light to how many not to some it giveth light if you are light indeed your relevance should cut across systems structures religion he says if you are light your light gives illumination to all not some not some that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty but he says that was the true light that lighted every man then he leaves us with a final charge verse 16 he says if it is true that you are that light he says let your light the word let is the word permit allow allow that light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result glorify your father in heaven we began a discussion talking about the king and his desire I'm not going into all of that but then i did tell you that when you meet the king you are always left with a mandate that you have an obligation to the king remember that your obligation to the king is your loyalty your surrenderedness and then your obedience this is your obligation to the king if at any point in your kingdom adventure you are found wanting in this tripartite requirements you are not faithful your faithfulness is measured by the degree of your loyalty your degree of surrenderedness and then your degree of obedience to the king but when you encounter the king he now leaves you with a mandate that mandate is to become an extension of himself to your world now he calls you light the same thing God is called God is light Jesus was called the light of the world and he calls us light and then he says we are salt you see salt has two principal assignments as we know number one is for value to add taste number two is for preservation are we together now it is it's amazing that when you cook it is never too late to add salt there are ingredients that when you don't add at a certain time that meal cannot be the meal you intended is that true but even if you make a mistake and forget salt even at the table there is still an opportunity to add it there and it will not look like you ever made a mistake this is the description of you that means you are never a disadvantage to any system it does not matter the time of arrival provided you show up in that system there must be a space for your relevance he calls you salt that you add value to any system are we together that means the next time you find yourself in your place of work do not think your technical skills are the only thing you are bringing no you will be mistaken a thousand times you are like the ark of god in the house of 
women end up beyond the technical skills you are providing you bring your chiefest value is the presence of god in that corporation are we together now yes so you are the salt of the earth it says but it is your responsibility to keep your saltiness alive so that when you are in the place they can feel your saltiness indeed the power to preserve from decadence and then the power to add this then he says you are the light of the world he likens you to a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that it cannot be hidden that means visibility is every believer's heritage in christ visibility and influence is not it's not something for a few people are we together now it is god it is god's desire the king's desire for everyone to be elevated to a position where you can attract the attention of all and sundry that they can learn god through your life and through the excellency of the results that you command you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden then he uses another example he says neither do men light a lamp he never said neither do men put a lamp if the lamp is not lit it doesn't carry any value but once fire comes upon that lamp he says you cannot hide it again but it should be lifted and put in a position where it supplies light to everyone in the room listen to me ladies and gentlemen when the king sends you to represent him his reputation is invested upon you that means when you live a life that does not bear fruit when you live a life that does not produce results it's an indictment on the integrity of the one who sent you he said when i sent you lackest thou anything and they said nothing there are many people who claim to be sent by jesus i'm not just talking in ministry the average believer from a kingdom dimension believes he's an advocate not just of righteousness but of the kingdom and that is true the bible says so the bible calls us ambassadors and in the verse we just read he calls us salt he calls us light in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he calls us witnesses if it is true that we are light we are salt we are ambassadors we are witnesses then it means that the reputation of the king must have been invested in my life and your life it means we do not just come to pharaoh and tell him i met the god of the hebrews and he said let my people go pharaoh will not let the people go because of that grammar you must bring before you a testament that shows you really met the king are we together this is why results are very powerful they are very powerful because they they give credence to the fact that you were truly sent by god are we together now paul a man approved of god there are corresponding apostolic signs many believers do not know why we don't command the kind of kingdom influence now in leadership and, and thank god for the kind of church that i'm ministering in you're not ignorant in this area at all but in leadership we teach that there are several cadres as far as influence is concerned and there is a cadre in leadership where the influence that you exert upon people is at the instance of the excellency of the results that you command are we together now yes there are dimensions of the influence that comes because of the title the office that you hold so people do not respect you just because they love you they honor the office that you occupy then there is a dimension of leadership that is because of the excellency of your character are we together now they love you because of a disposition of moral excellence but there is a dimension of influence and leadership that happens at the instance of results that when you are bankrupt of results and you cannot lead that organization to provide provable results nobody is going to be loyal to you this is the kind of world we have found ourselves so it's not enough to say jesus heals jesus saves jesus lifts. he has sent me he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the word blessed means empowered to produce results so when you say i come in the name of the lord people don't just say amen you are welcome they watch 
for the signs of authenticity when you buy a product that claims it came from a company there are certain seals and certain codes around that product is that true that helps you to distinguish the real from the fake say perhaps it's a toothpaste they will even advertise that when you buy toothpaste from us check you will see something maybe a, a silver label or something like that so when you say you have been sent from god there must be attesting signs and tonight this meeting is not just a miracle service to heal and pray for the sick but it's largely an impartation service that for god's sake something will rest upon your life in the name of jesus christ shouting and saying i am from god is not how it is done your results are evangelists hear me there is a sermon only your results can preach you are not the only one who was supposed to be an evangelist your results are also evangelists and there is an audience that only your results can preach to if you are the only one doing evangelism yourself and your results are silent you are not preaching well both you and your results should preach when moses came and met pharaoh he spoke once and the rods continued to speak him are we together yes this this is the same strategy that the secular world has used to enslave believers they don't talk so loud but my goodness their results are ever speaking from one dimension and one level of success we criticize them but we are still slaves to them are we together Let me show you a few scriptures in matthew chapter 8 from verse 23 to 27 i want to show you the kind the portrait of what god desires for you to become if it is true that you are one with christ and if it is true that you are sent as an ambassador by the king matthew 8 we'll begin our reading from verse 23 the bible says and when he the he being jesus was entered into a ship his disciples followed him 24 reading to 27 and behold the bible says there arose a great tempest in the sea in so much that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep 25 and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we perish and he said unto them why are ye fearful O ye of little faith i love jesus and then he arose this is what it means to be light this is what it means to be salt it's not to join in the lamentation when those who are not light are afraid and confused they run to you and when they run to you it, it takes more than sympathy jesus encouraged them but he turned and the bible says he rebuked the winds and the sea help me and there was great results and there was great results you can call it anything but the fact that he took action and there was results that the disciples could see the next verse please the bible says but the men marveled saying what manner of pastor is this what manner of businessman is this what manner of entrepreneur is this we've seen other kinds but what manner of man is this that even the business world obey him what manner of preacher is this that you can compel resources you can compel men that should be saved obedience is what made them to marvel the moment you are truly obedient to the king everything the king created must be obedience to you listen carefully your obedience the, the the authority and the dominion you command is not just an arbitrary dominion is a is a reflection principle the degree to which you are loyal to the king you are surrendered to the king you are obedient to the king that is the same degree to which creation is compelled to be obedient to you when jesus came he so lavishly acknowledged the father even though he was equal with god he brought himself so low and acknowledged the father and attested to the fact that he could do nothing without the assistance and the leadership of the father 
now we see jesus commanding the winds commanding the waves and the bible says they obeyed him and the people marvel we understand men obey you but the wind and the sea inanimate things finances obeying you the territory obeying you the earth obeying you are we together the bible says they marveled and that should be your testimony that people will say we've employed people in this company but from the day we brought this person we cannot describe your technical skill is there but it looks like there is something else you have brought to this corporation the dimensions of favor wisdom is open doors are we learning next scripture In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, very simple and popular scripture, but I want us to read it together. Read it with conviction. Are you ready? One to read, please. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and wonders in Lagos, for signs and wonders in Nigeria. Hold on. For signs, mention the name of everywhere that you should be a sign and a wonder. For signs and wonders in the marketplace, signs and wonders in Europe, in America. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Please look up. You know what a sign is? The assignment of a sign, a signboard was designed to captivate your attention no matter how distracted you are. So they designed a signboard intentionally. They use all of the psychology, all of light, every, there is usually heavy investments in signboards. So that no matter how distracted you are, it becomes too evident to ignore it. But... A sign never points you to itself it tells you you are closer to the location when you are headed to a place and you see a sign it says turn left finally you know you are almost there the Bible says we are for signs that means by my design something should rise from my life that creation should not ignore me this is not about being arrogant the excellency of the design that God invested his artistry in my making and that if I allow myself to be so constructed, I will carry a formation that will compel nations and kings to bear witness to the fact that this is truly a sign. I and the children that the Lord has given me, he says we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. But I like the remaining part. From who? From the Lord of hosts. We are not just signs that appeared running our own agenda. We were sent by the king as signs. The woman at the well left not just receiving a miracle. She ran and she became a sign. Let me show you how signs work. This was a known prostitute. Six men in her life. Five men, the six not even being her husband. And after an encounter with Jesus, the Bible says she left her water, the issue of fetching water. She ran to the city. So she had the potential to do that, but not without an encounter. The Bible says she told everyone without thinking what they would think about her. Come see a man. Her witness was so compelling. The people had to leave their businesses and say, this woman, we know her. Where did this courage suddenly come from? Come see a man that had told me everything that I ever done. They did not come because they loved Jesus. They came because the sign was a sign indeed. And when they came to Jesus, they had an opportunity to sit down with him and to discuss with him. And here was their verdict. Now we believe, not just because of you, we have seen for ourselves. That is the assignment of a sign. That when you come from a family that is known for practicing witchcraft, that nobody rises beyond certain levels. And my God, the Lord lifts you by engaging the mysteries that you have taught and by accessing the kinds of graces that will fall upon you this night. That you move in a speed that no one can explain. In one year, in two years. You command a level of financial dominion, territorial dominion, 
where your life becomes a bible study manual that people can use your life to learn god and say we've not seen him in this fashion i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs now when a sign stops pointing to the real object it no longer becomes a sign you see that this is the reason why before he sends you he makes you because the tendency for pride in the midst of result is there and all humans who are not worked on by god will fall victim so he walks upon you so that your will becomes to glorify him and when he invests so much of his glory and while the world is clapping for you you are unashamed you can point them and say i am only a sign come and see the one who sent me john said i am the voice of one crying he was not ashamed john chapter 1 and verse 6 there was a man sent from god i like that rendition the bible says his name was john there was a man sent from god his name was joshua selman there was a man a woman sent from god a businessman a businesswoman a politician a career person sent from god you only pass through the womb of your mother you were sent from god and the bible says his name was john the assignment is in verse 7 the bible says the same came for a witness that through the excellency of his witness men might believe do you believe all i've said so far so that we do not waste all the prayers and the impartation god is determined to make something out of you tonight that you have never been yet is 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 a kind is a version of you that is about to be unveiled but it is important for you to understand that in the midst of the glory and the glitz and the glamour remember my teaching he's only decorating the signboard so that you will attract the world indeed and bring them to the king king of my life you are my own and I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my all. And I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours, you're the king of my life. That is our creed in this kingdom. Everything belongs to you. So when you lift us up, it's so that the world can see us clearer. And then we draw them to you unashamedly and intentionally. We let them know that no man can do these things except God be with him listen if you understand what i'm teaching you tonight it's like you have officially signed the contract of being a sign and a wonder it's not as if god cannot lift i'm telling you it's not as if god cannot bless but most believers do not understand what it takes you must have that orientation and that understanding that everything that revolves in the kingdom especially as touching your rising is so that you become a mirror it's called in theology the reflection principle the moon does not have a light of itself it is the degree to which it aligns to the sun that it shines so when you see the moon halfway that is not the true shape of the moon that is only the part of the moon that aligns to the sun the part of you that aligns to god is a part that the world will see shining for some of you the moon is so small you have been so misrepresented because of your disalignment there is something called full moon where the moon aligns perfectly and it can make night to even become like evening are we together so all this petty pride that is destroying our generation should not even rise you see humility is not just a character trait humility is a revelation is the resultant effect of understanding what i'm teaching you 
because you see pride is rebellion it means number one you do not even know the king number one you don't know yourself number three you don't know your assignment you alone are god and i surrender oh you alone are god and i surrender That when God lifts you whilst you are holding the billions of naira and all of the money the temptation is that everybody will look at you and say I think there's a language we use in nice blow <laughs> no. that's too small a reason for God to invest his integrity upon your life the ad that kind of agenda is too is too small but when it becomes that the nations must see your glory now you are speaking the king's language when you come to him and say, Lord, invest upon me the healing anointing. All right? What's the purpose for the healing anointing? Lord, I come from a family where nobody has looked. Uh, people have looked down on me and I want to cure that shame. Too small a reason for God to invest that healing anointing. But ladies and gentlemen, when you get to a point where you say, Lord, I know that in this end time you desire your healing power to reach the nations. Can you find a worthy vessel in me that becomes an extension of your possibilities to the nation? You are speaking the king's language. I'm teaching you how to speak to the king. For many years, a woman wanted a child. And the purpose of that child was simply to solve the mockery that was coming from her stepwife and you would think that because of that agenda God will respond it was not enough reason at all but the day she said Lord you are looking for a prophet I've changed my agenda I, I let's let's talk kingdom she prayed once and Samuel arrived let me tell you the truth lamentations out of pain and misery and kingdom driven prayers are two different things unfortunately most of us in the body of christ invest hours praying the kind of prayer that is founded and garnished with selfishness and sometimes we make very nasty statements as if we forget that it's god we are talking to and we expect him to listen and then to answer All these prayers about mockery and the rest now I'm not I know that God will always prove a point in your life but sincerely I'm telling you how the king operates if there is anything that drives your passion other than to see him glorified forget about the investment of his power are we learning yes. let me show you one more scripture Jesus John 14 verse 12 I'm just charging your hearts and we'll pray John 14 12 here's what Jesus said verily verily I say unto you who is speaking now Jesus himself the truth so there is no lie in what you are hearing he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also <laughs> and he says greater works than this shall he do fill my life till all they see is you Lord glorify listen to what I'm saying that's a prayer fill my life till all they see is you Glorify for all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for. When I started ministry, I never knew there was something called honorarium that a man preaches and you can put a basket of fruits and say, thank you, go and eat. I never knew that there was such a thing. 
because that was never the drive it's an honor to serve his majesty you see that seeing souls saved seeing lives transformed that was it thank you oh god that every other thing that came as a fringe blessing was a surprise for doing this for serving you with all my heart this is what you are doing and when god finds that kind of heart he says you are doing this for me let's go to the next level i hope god is speaking to someone so that before you receive all this impartation and start running out and then just go and kill yourself for no reason god is there is a circumcision that god is doing in our hearts let me tell you many people have failed god they have failed god because they did not learn kingdom they did not learn kingdom when it has to do with kingdom your name decreases let every other name fade away that's the language of the kingdom let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place sing it one more time with conviction in your heart let every other name fade away. all those idols that are risen above the name of the Christ. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jesus, That's how it works in this kingdom. There cannot be two kings in the same kingdom. That's why he took us to this side of his kingdom. He is the king of we kings here. Listen, look at me. The king understood this, Darius, and he made them to build a statue of himself, 90 feet tall. And he says there's only one king in babylon if you hear the sound of the trumpet no matter who you are relinquish all your earthly duties you become a worshiper immediately and anyone who fails to worship you are a rebel i don't care how excellent your administrative skills are when it has to do with the issue of the king i don't want to know if you are the chief financier of babylon you must bow and there were four hebrew boys who said king we respect you but there is you don't know who sent us there is a conflict of dominion when it has to do with administration we will respect you when it has to do with our civil duties but as far as our allegiance is concerned your statue came too late there is a king he says our god would deliver us and the king watched and said this voice oh king we are not careful we are sent we respect you but there is a government that we have pledged our allegiance and there will be no negotiation and they they, they made the, the fiery furnace seven times to the extent the bible records that those who threw them there were burned by the fire and they took them watch the jealousy of the king as soon as they arrived because the bible says where two or three are gathered even if it's in fire provided two or three are gathered I am there in their midst gathered in the challenge gathered in church gathered in pain where two or three are gathered doesn't matter the location if it is in my name I will come and defend my name hallelujah and the king said were there not four men I hope you know that the, the fourth man would have been invisible but he became visible because there was a message to prove that just because you see me standing alone does not mean i am alone just because you are doing business alone
does not mean you are alone and when occasion demands the one with you who stands by you like a mighty terrible one he reveals himself to the world they will see the difference between you and him they will know you are not alone hallelujah no you are not alone you are not doing business alone you are not in the office alone it looks like you are walking alone they see you alone but you are jealously guarded you were sent by the king you are an ambassador beyond an employee carry that mentality if i ask you who do you work for your first question is one bank or whatever and you are right but from an eternal standpoint you are very wrong hmm. the one who sent me ever before me before the bank saw you they only saw you because he sent you the corporation only saw you because he sent you they have discerned your value before he sent you so when they say go and you go back and cry and say i am finished you insulted the one who originally sent you someone shall send. send one more time say send. send it's a mentality you must carry you may look ordinary but you were sent from god oh your parents said they finished giving birth it just happens that you came no god forced you there because there, there's an agenda that still had your name on it you see when you carry this mentality your orientation on many grounds begin to change your concept of rewards your concept of men your concept of love every your approach you live on earth like a foreigner even though you have tremendous influence over the people and the resources but there is something about your mind they know that your relationship is not connected to anything here because you are sent no matter how long the ambassador of us is in nigeria he knows us is not his home yet you will see him driving convoys yet you will see him staying in the best of hotels but he is eternally aware that i'm a u.s citizen first sent on a mission they named their mission after what sent them and notice what happened we had an incident recently i was told somewhere in the eastern part of the nation where you know there was an assault or so on u.s citizens and within moments the secretary of state had made a speech that is kingdom who is touching the one i sent and they say there's somebody he, he has touched everybody in that family like that and then god gives you a scripture to announce to that devil but i know whom i believed listen and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed to him not keep that which is available when you become that which is committed to him his jealousy now comes in place to defend you all that you have given me he says i have kept john 17 and none is lost except the son of partition and that that scripture might be fulfilled he's a keeper not just a maker so when he makes your business he keeps it so you can have longevity of impact there's no need to be afraid will i last 10 years no if you know the one who keeps you and your loyalty and your obedience and your surrenderedness is in check the dust will rise and fall you will still stand are we together so when god begins to use you listen carefully we're about to pray now when god begins to use you and announce you in various dimensions to the nations ladies and gentlemen you must have it at the back of your mind that you are not there for yourself every time pride begins to come fight it like you are fighting sin fight it like you are fighting the devil because it is a cancer that can destroy god fights anything that fights him even if he's the one that gave you I hope you know God can give you something he will later fight. <laughs> Just because he gave you. The moment it becomes an enemy to his program, even if it is you, he will get you out of the way. Is it in your Bible that there are people God resists? Is it in your Bible? Who resists them? That God himself.
can resist men talk more of things it is not every loss that is demonic there are some losses that have come because you have used it to become an enemy to god's program he does not resist it because it's his character to deplete anything that stands the way of his program even jesus when he became seen the father turned his face from him eloi eloi lama sabatani father me and you again he said no this is not jesus on the cross this is a compendium of all men an embodiment of sin and he turned his face I hope you know that God himself submits to the integrity of his word. That he has exalted his word even above his reputation. The word name there is his reputation. God is touched by the feelings of your infirmity, but he's only moved by his word. Touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but moved by his word. So just because you are crying does not guarantee that God will move. Even as God, there is a modus operandi that governs his activity. The word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He says the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him. That means outside of him was not anything made that was made. That's John 1, 1 and 3 without him outside of his influence was not anything made hallelujah this is what gives us the confidence to do the things that we do this is what gives us the confidence this is what gives your man that 10 years from now calvary bible church will only be going from glory to glory why because there is a scriptural guarantee that if it is true that you are the just it says your path should be as the shining light that shineth ever brighter satan notwithstanding unto the perfect day when that scripture was written god was aware that satan was on earth and the scripture was still written are we together now yes there is no challenge that you are going through tonight that is new under the sun. There's none of us here who went through Job's kind of tragedy. Yet the Bible testifies that at the end of it, the latter end of Job's life was even greater than the former. In Job 42 and verse 10, the Bible says the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And then the Bible even tells us how it happens. It says that he gave Job twice as much as he had. The secret is found in verse 11. It says many of his acquaintances, his brethren, the people who left him before, they came and they ate bread with him in his house they bemoaned him and comforted him of all the calamities that had befallen him and the bible said every man gave him a piece of money so every man can give it just depends on who directs them the bible says every man plus the stingy relatives that man was crippled and they did not attend to him but when the king said give him i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus may the king ordain an instruction on earth for your rising may the king compel men to give the bible says every man gave sit down apostle you don't know how greedy my uncle is i respect your saying but it's because you do not know that there is a name god is called the father of spirits that every spirit submits to him when god compels a man to bless pharaoh as hardened as pharaoh was he was the one who gave favor to the egyptian to the israelites to the point that when they had left it was like a charm something came over him and he said what did i do i gave the gold of egypt pursue them an influence can come upon men and compel them to bless and favor you regardless look at that scripture let me show you how god restored Job. every man I read this scripture many years ago and I cried I said so every man can give don't let anybody tell you me God forbid I will not attend to you respect them and leave them go back to the king who sent you and said king you had the arrogance of your creation and the king will say leave me and them hmm. this king this mysterious king all powerful he's called every man gave unto him let's finish that scripture every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold how many of them my question is were they not there 
from a logical standpoint at his time of pain and that time which was the best time to help him so don't blame somebody for forgetting you it depends on what is on your head and it depends on the verdict that was passed over you it says thou anointest my head with oil not my cup you anoint my head but i can know what is on my head by looking at my cup if your cup is empty stop blaming the business it's not the business the business is a report card that there is something you are not carrying or not carrying enough till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place listen when you when you believe what i'm teaching you you will live a humble life but nobody on earth will bully you because everybody was created this emotional bully that goes on from nation to nation looking down on people by reason of whatever it is all that is absolute nonsense when you are indoctrinated and intoxicated with the extent of the love of the king for you i may have said it in this church if god says he's blessing 10 people i'll start praying for the remaining nine because one spot is gone already at the point he said it one spot is already booked that is how much he loves me do you believe this this is not a preacher sermon you can't fake these kinds of things for a long time one day to become clear that you are talking nonsense believers why are we here tonight number one to experience the power of God the supernatural power that is invested in this kingdom we belong to a glorious kingdom we belong to a kingdom that is higher than the realm of science so don't ask how the growth disappeared you only know what you were taught in school but there are other dimensions higher than the <laughs> witchcraft in Africa should help us believe God easier because witchcraft has is a realm that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and people have seen a semblance you know in in Africa in marketplaces there are people I don't know if it happens here but there are many markets where people play with hyenas they play with swords that don't cut them these are manipulations of spiritual laws I'm not exalting witchcraft I'm just saying that possibility should already charge you to know that if this can happen look at what you know the level of technology right now is opening us up to dimensions all kinds of things and the king sits upon his throne and says I will make you the head and not the tail and you are there cracking your little mind saying how you put your little statistics the y the x and say lord it does not add up and he says take it away my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways for as high and far apart as the heaven is yours is to believe him to believe him even through wisdom and say lord i may not understand the bible says just like you do not know how the bones of her who is with child are formed or the way of the wind so you do not know the ways of god that means the dynamics of how god manifests things god can say by tomorrow you are a millionaire and you say lord i do not believe this ask the land of samaria and ask the arrogance of the man upon whom the king leaned he said even if god will open the windows of heaven might this happen and i'm sure the king saying the windows of heaven do you know what happened the last time the windows of heaven were opened ladies and gentlemen it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and all the blessings that come with that kingdom because the king is also your father comes from the word abba the word abba means your source your sustainer your protector your defender that means everything that plagues you becomes a concern to him so the bible says to come boldly before the throne you are coming to meet a king except that it is a throne of grace not just a throne of justice it is a throne of grace so that in spite of your inadequacies you still have access to the king hallelujah this is the mentality i carry when i pray for the sick and minister and all the things that god does through my life listen this is all of me you are intelligent look at me and look at the result you know there's a missing part of the equation 
that missing part only his size can feel one plus jesus is equal to the answer he puts there any answer he puts is right one plus one is two mathematically are we together one plus one plus one is three but one plus even if he's zero plus jesus doesn't matter what came the moment you add him there is no equal to is the answer he puts there creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus one more time i want you to sing it creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus i like this part says you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus. apostle are you saying at the instance of a prophetic word i can leave this meeting and go back home and things begin to change exactly that if you believe that you understood my sermon already apostle are you saying that i can leave this place like this and someone who has forgotten me can suddenly remember me yes sir yes sir yes sir apostle are you saying i can carry a grace out of this church that i did not come in with yes sir because this is the house of god bethel the place of bread there is a hallowed bread of the spirit there is the anointing that can rest upon a man please believe this man of god are you saying apostle that something can come upon me that by sunday when i climb my pulpit is going to be fire there yes sir listen 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 if water can turn to wine if soul can turn to paul why can't poverty turn to prosperity why can't why can't weakness turn to strength but you see listen listen to me listen to me listen to me i'm only showing you how far god can go for your sake there is one more thing i will show you and then if all i do is to speak over you afterwards i will live satisfied are we together now god is able never forget this god is able never forget this god is able let this revelation make your problem become very small this is what encounters do they shrink everything the, the devil has over bloated and magnified are you aware that your children are going to school are you aware that the school fees has been multiplied are you aware that you have just one week and now you are sitting yes you may have been careless financially but he will solve that problem first before he will now teach you how to get it systemically he will not allow you suffer because you got yourself in a mess but he will still solve that problem before he teaches you the kingdom's way of systemically building wealth he will not allow you go through shame now that embarrassment is imminent this is the advantage we have in the kingdom please sit down i want you to write this now and then we'll pray please write this down there are three keys that control the manifestation of extraordinary results i felt stirred in my spirit to just say this three keys that control the manifestation of extraordinary results if i do not teach you this i hate to be a bearer of bad news but many of you may have shouted for for just an empty shout in vain i need to show you these three keys key number one the first key that controls the manifestation of extraordinary results is revelation knowledge revelation knowledge first 
the knowledge of God and then number two the knowledge of his systems God is a God of systems the first key for commanding extraordinary results is revelation knowledge and I'm saying there are two dimensions of knowledge there under that point number one the knowledge of God himself like you have been taught but number two the knowledge of the systems you call them the mysteries of the kingdom you call them the modus operandi of the kingdom now please look up it's important for you to understand that as mighty as god is he is the god of systems we see it through scripture that he seldom does the same thing twice what god does his character is that he introduces a spiritual process and builds a system around that process for continuity are we together so he made the first man and the first woman and never had to make man again he built a system called reproduction are we together and it is by effectively practicing that system that we even have a problem with population on earth today that that after thousands of years that system still stands valid are we together now that when he planted in the garden he put within the tree the seed that represents a system for continuity are we together now so knowing god is wonderful but you must understand his modus operandi that means there is an economic system to the kingdom there is a system in the kingdom for influence there is a system in the kingdom for longevity are we together your assignment is not just to know the possibilities that this kingdom contains but to study the systems that lead to them those the the desires the prayer points that we have are spiritual outcomes there are exact systems that lead there so if i am in trouble there is a spiritual system for deliverance for instance i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise and he says so by calling upon him a combination of prayer and praise shall i be saved from my enemies that is a spiritual system at midnight paul and silas bound and doomed for destruction the bible says they prayed the same system and then they sang loud enough for the prisoners to hear them and there was deliverance for them are we together yes favor has a system we have taught in the body of christ respectfully speaking for many years that favor is unmerited i disagree i disagree favor is multi-dimensional it is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited that which is touching the saving grace but favor that manifests as results and abundance and prosperity is merited it works based on laws are we together proverbs 13 15 it says good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard is that in your bible that means you can program favor and you can program its continuity so that it does not just happen once it can happen again and again regardless the location that you can master the laws of favor to a point that in 24 hours if you are not favored you will go for a retreat you can hold on to eternal life with that level of accuracy how about influence influence is there is an anointing that brings influence but there are systems in the kingdom that elevates a man to a position are we together now yes for instance when you become valuable and you provide constructive solutions that are needed and useful as far as a civilization is concerned and you know how to package your value intelligently and serve it to a targeted consumer base you will not only be rewarded it will translate to influence influence has laws now most believers especially in africa haven't rejoiced like we did earlier we just end in that realm of superstition and remain there and hope that since this king is great Oh, yeah, oh, I've been waiting. You are not lifting me. Whereas you can rewrite your story when you get tired. The systems of the kingdom were designed to bring predictability to the results of the believer. Are we together now? If a, if a terrorist goes to the farm to farm, will the crops grow? Please talk to me. Will the crops grow? 
not minding that he's killing people he will go to hell when jesus comes but as far as the lord's seed time and harvest is concerned it is a system and a dimension of god's power has been programmed within that system so i need to tell you this if you want to command extraordinary results it is knowledge dependent now in truth there are dimensions to our results that no amount of knowledge can be able to produce there is an added factor to it but that which is our responsibility we must hold on to and do diligently are we together now yes so revelation knowledge you must know god and you must understand the systems of the kingdom if i were you when i go back and i'm studying this this teaching i will write out the list of areas that are not working in my life honestly and sincerely and take responsibility under god then begin to study the systems that are connected to that outcome say for instance it looks like i love god with all my heart but this finance is not working rather than guessing and saying one day go better i would go and get say school of money and get the pathway to wealth and put those books and those steps together are we together now because one of the ways that we obtain promises is to follow them ultimately we follow him but you can start by following them the them who are following him and you are still safe as you follow them follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise transformation is impossible until there is a reference so you must have people whose materials and minds he says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and blessed him and increased him you're not the first to desire rising so on the study from scripture what did they do and isaac sowed in that land and reaped that same year a hundredfold and the lord multiplied him he began to prosper he worked strong he was very great until the philistines envied him are we together yeah. let's assume that you're always losing valuable relationships everybody who loves you later leaves you after you cast out the spirits that bring bad luck if you stop there you are in trouble the spirits themselves will laugh at you because they know that there is a dimension of deliverance that comes through transformation casting out the spirit influence is only the first phase of deliverance the chiefest part of deliverance comes by giving yourself a renewed orientation that he that wants friends must show himself friendly so you go and buy books that help you to master relationships you begin to learn laws like friendliness like honor are we together now when you learn these principles people skills you find out that you begin to have a greater command of valuable relationships that is a kingdom system what of the anointing you find out that it looks like you are limited as far as manifesting the anointing is concerned you go and get materials that teach you how to command and to grow in the anointing because grace and peace can be multiplied everything that comes to you from god comes as a seed he gives you that seed together with the wisdom that makes for the multiplication and in this case that wisdom is the holy spirit in partnership with the word you can learn the principles that make for your rising are we together revelation knowledge number two faith the second key that commands extraordinary result is faith please put in bracket actions of obedience in simple terms now that ye know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them having abundant knowledge without taking steps of faith will only end you in tragedy you must sustain the courage that now that you know these things you must summon the courage to act in faith knowing that god will back you and then finally number three the anointing the assignment of the anointing the anointing is the engracing of god coming to honor your obedience we were discussing i think it was yesterday night or so with um uh, your man of god and we're just talking and he was talking about extra and ordinary that they come from two words there is extra god's dimension and god's role there is ordinary your own role if you leave extra alone it remains potent in the realm of the spirit ordinary alone that becomes very barren to produce anything supernatural is that combination of extra and ordinary that produces extraordinary i agree i agree 
it is always the spirit and the bride say come it's not the spirit alone and it's not the bride alone so when the spirit say be healed the bride must also echo be healed for healing to come when the spirit says prosper the bride must walk in keeping with the principles that make for prosperity for prosperity to manifest the bible says the word became flesh the process of becoming flesh was the holy spirit and a human vessel don't forget the holy spirit alone as powerful as he was could not produce jesus in the flesh are we together now yes not because of bankruptcy of ability but honor to his system that if ever a spirit must manifest on earth wearing a mortal body a human vessel in this case a woman must play that role the holy spirit had to patiently look at how he lies with mary zechariah made the same mistake mary made and he was punished and yet for mary how shall these things be and it took time to explain and she said be it unto me if mary rejected you have to go to another virgin and start begging because it is the spirit and the bride now the bride is available what then stops the spirit the problem is never with the holy spirit he is ever willing is the laxity and the carelessness of the bride to learn the ways of the kingdom are we together remember there were 10 virgins there's no time to tell you that story but all 10 were virgins their mistake was that some were foolish and what was the foolishness there they had the word but they ignored the ministry of the spirit the oil so with time because of the delay of the bridegroom there was no oil and the oil finished and they had to run to go and buy returning the door was closed so that extra factor is called wisdom not just having the lamb but having the oil we're about to pray are we together now and when we pray we may not have time to take testimonies my apologies because we have to honor the time but i'm going to speak over the sick and over those who are oppressed i will speak over you and declare prophetically over you then we pray that god will just release his grace upon our lives and we are done tonight but i the real assignment is what i have done now these truths that you have received go back and camp with it and turn yourself into a more superior version of yourself that brings great glory and great honor to the king that the testament of your life will become galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me please rise on your feet let's pray make sure you are not distracted this is a very prophetic moment now lift your voice in one minute and begin to ask the lord to grant you a mighty visitation a mighty visitation even by the spirit of god mighty visitation by the spirit of the living god in the name of jesus now you are trusting god for healing in any part of your body i want you to just place your hand right there place your hand right there very quickly if you are standing in for someone a loved one you can touch yourself as a sign if it's a part of your body you cannot lay hands on just make contact with your chest i want you to believe that jesus is able to heal and for those of you who are watching i want to pray for the sick right now hallelujah lay your hands and we'll pray you can use the other sessions to testify you can let pastor and the church know that jesus touched you in the course of this meeting in the name of jesus christ shout a loud amen, amen. in the name of jesus christ now i decree and i declare that every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing anyone here or our viewers online in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that spirit to leave you right now i command that demonic influence to leave you right now now i declare be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet I declare supernatural healing healing of the eyes in the name of Jesus migraines be healed in Jesus name 
bone conditions be healed in Jesus' name. Blood conditions be healed in Jesus' name. Cancers die in Jesus' name. Ulcers be gone in Jesus' name. Kidney problems, I bring life and healing for you in Jesus' name. Anyone suffering with the issue of blood, I declare be healed now. Fibroids and all kinds of demonic growths, I command them to leave your body now. HIV, be healed in Jesus' name. Heart conditions, be healed in Jesus' name. And if there is anyone here, who is having anyone in the hospital maybe your loved ones in the name of jesus i release my faith and we stand under the corporate anointing we declare life to them right now Amen. that that same power that raised christ from the dead may that same power rest upon them right now Amen. in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now hear me every spirit that has impeded your progress in life and in destiny in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god i decree and declare by this mantle and this oil i declare they give way right now Amen. believe it they give way right now Amen. believe it they give way right now. Amen. Father, I am praying for everyone here who has not experienced the favor of God. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the prophetic, I decree and declare from tonight, experience dramatic levels of favor. Amen. The kind of favor that accelerates your life and destiny i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hear me anyone here who has lost money you've lost resources or maybe some business and things went down i declare by the power of prophecy between now and the next three months i call on the god of my covenant may you jack back to life may your finances jack back to life in the name of jesus christ for every home here where there has been mourning and languishing it looks like nobody is rising and nobody is going forward he said it was the lord that caused moses and aaron to advance i stand as one sent by god i push you prophetically go forward go forward go forward hey i prophesy to someone to ministry go forward to business go forward to career go forward in the name of jesus christ go forward in the name of jesus christ you hear me the bible says in second corinthians chapter 9 when you begin to read from verse 8 upwards it says and god is able to make all grace say all grace that means graces are multi-dimensional god is able to make not some grace all grace are bound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency you know what sufficiency is the capacity to meet expectations without disappointing is called sufficiency so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work remember you have been taught here that your results bring glory to jesus because there is a salmon there is a kind of evangelism that happens at the instance of your results and god is saying to ensure that you keep producing results i can coordinate every grace you need the grace for speed the grace for influence are we together now 
every grace that is needed so that you are sufficient i'm about to pray for you now i'm standing upon the grace of the angel over this commission and all the men and women of god here represented i'm going to speak over your life this will be about my final assignment please just help those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out but i want to release something upon you and sincerely for as many whose hearts will be open my god will surprise you yeah. hallelujah now i decree and declare the grace that draws men to the secret place that grace for encounter maybe not for everybody but let it fall on someone now the grace for the secret place help them please that translates to a life of prayer a life of consecration may that grace that attracts the mantle of your destiny please help them receive it in the name of jesus number two I pray for you there is a grace that can make all men see the spirit of revelation the eyes of your understanding being enlightened receive that grace right now receive that grace right now may your eyes be open to understand the ways of God may your apparatus may your eyes be open in the name of Jesus Christ The Bible says, then open ye their understanding that they might understand scripture. Number three, can I pray for you? There is a grace for speed, dominion over time, that in a short time, you can do so much. I don't know who desires that grace, but may that fire, I stand by the apostolic. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed in ministry. Speed in destiny. Speed in your life. Help them please. Speed in the name of Jesus. You will run like Elijah. You will overtake the chariots of Ahab. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Speed. That 10 years is put in one year. That one year is put in one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me. We are wrapping up but I want you to listen. Please don't just jump for nothing. Make sure you are receiving something. My God fire is burning in this place. There is a grace for influence and visibility. When that grace comes upon you. It is impossible for a territory to reject you. It is a grace for influence. It's the hear ye him anointing. Maybe not for everyone, but for someone here, you have worked on your skill. You have worked on your value. What you need is that grace. I stretch my hands by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. I command rise and shine. Rise and shine beyond Lagos, beyond the West beyond nigeria rise and shine by the spirit of the living god please help that lady so she doesn't injure herself in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please help them you don't have to be an usher we're wrapping up but if for those under the anointing please manage them so they don't injure themselves hear me the Bible says, speaking to Abraham, it says, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Not from where you want to go, from where you are. Lift up your eyes and look northwards, southwards, eastwards, northwards. It says, as far as your eyes can see. Forget about where you are. If you can lift your eyes, let me tell you this. From any location, everybody on earth can see the sky from any location you don't need to travel to Kano or to your village or to america to see the sky it's the privilege of everyone once you can look up now watch this 
we are wrapping up my sincere apologies sir. listen how many of you believe that there is a grace called honor you see let me tell you what honor is honor is an engracing from god upon your life that makes people to perceive you correctly and to reward you to match your sacrifice is called honor when the grace for honor is not upon you you will always be shortchanged based on the perception people have you can be the son of the living god but they will call you a carpenter's son because the grace for honor is not upon you listen to me he said take joshua the son of Nun, and said to anoint him with the spirit then he says take some of your honor and put upon him you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you upon another there are many of us here you are so great but because this mantle is not on you you are not perceived to match the true extent of your sacrifice it is amazing that those we call the best of everything in our world are not truly the best they are just the ones who have access honor as perceived in the eyes of a generation there are people in villages today who are living longer than those who the world says are the longest people but the grace for honor is not on them when the grace for honor is on you men will look for you listen baby jesus was born he had not solved anybody's problem as a baby born a compendium full of grace and truth including the grace for honor and three men magi came with gold frankincense and myrrh as matured adults to salute a baby when honor rests upon you you will marvel and wonder god will lift up your perception in the eyes of those who can bless you and cause them to reward you to match the true level of your sacrifice let me pray for someone who truly desires this grace maybe in your office maybe in ministry i decree and declare here at this kingdom global conference i prophesy upon someone may that mantle for honor rest upon you may that mantle for honor rest upon you may that mantle for honor rest upon you it will speak in your workplace it will speak in your church it will speak in your territory it will speak in the business world in the name of jesus christ the final impartation that i want to do tonight i want you to listen please The final impartation that I want to bring upon your life if you will believe and if you will receive <laughs> there is something called the gift of men the, when God truly wants to honor you he does not give you things he gives you men listen carefully when God truly wants to honor you he gives you men ideas are useless until men give life to them business is all about men not products the products are midwives the uh, the final person is a man kill every man on earth and they will give you access to the gold mines access to the malls and it will be useless the ministry of men please watch this I'm saying this because this is the assignment of the grace for favor the grace for favor does not just bring things primarily it grants you access to unusual kindness unusual acceptance and unusual access all men dependent you may have heard me say ladies and gentlemen that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters if you are Esther it's not enough to know God as wonderful as it is the king must like you otherwise nothing will bring you to the palace if you are vashti pray that the king does not suddenly hate you because even as queen you will leave the palace in shame and he will never think twice about it let me tell you the truth when god the true proof of favor is not just material resources those are elementary things the true proof of favor is access to the hearts of men and that includes kings 
the bible talks about nehemiah the cup bearer of the king because he carried a strange favor the king looked at his countenance and without asking without asking the king the king said why is it you don't look happy and he says oh king i'm here but the walls of my city is not being built and the king said i will not only give you resources i will write letters and i will send you let nobody come to disturb you when men who came in the spirit of the antichrist called sambalat and tobias they came and they saw him building and they wanted to frustrate him the bible says he used a skill to build that every man must build with one hand he held the sword and with another hand he was building if you only hold the sword with two hands you will not build and if you only hold your building materials with two hands you will not build one hand must hold the sword your spiritual contact with the realm of the spirit the other hand is your technical skill this is how we build every wall that brings shame but that happened at the instance of favor i know what the favor of god can do believe me when i tell you this if this is the only impartation you receive tonight for some of you by the favor of god god can accelerate your life and bring beauty and color to your destiny and wipe the tears of your loved ones for god's sake you already have wisdom to manage what favor brings so we are not afraid of praying because favor without wisdom will only bring testimonies that don't have longevity testimonies that last is a combination of favor favor brings wisdom keeps this house is a fountain of wisdom god has so lavishly put upon his choice servant the wisdom that it takes therefore i pray every man that must arise on your course by the favor of god in the name of jesus receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now i prophesy to the west i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the north and south every man that must favor you as sent by god in the order of job beginning from this weekend may they show up in your life Amen. hallelujah listen to me everyone please no movement let's honor jesus for one last time our time is fast spent my apologies for stretching you i want to make an altar call right now this is the greatest miracle here beyond the testimony you are going to be bringing i saw so many people outside delighted to see many that the lord brought and we salute those of you outside and then for those of you who are following by way of television following by way of internet listen to me no matter what you get from this meeting if it is at the expense of your relationship with jesus and the expense of your eternal destiny you did not do much i want to make one last call tonight let's minimize movement as much as possible there has to be someone here tonight who is saying apostle if you will give me a chance i want to make it right with jesus i'm not calling for everybody but i'm calling for one person who will be bold enough to say i'm not ashamed i have seen the works of god i know by my spirit that jesus is calling me remember rejecting the king is rejecting life because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords i'm going to count one to five for as long as this space is still available i would request that you come and stand here when the space gets full then you may need to stand where you are and those who are outside i would ask you to walk to your projector stand i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand here as i count five one let's celebrate them as they come run to jesus two don't be ashamed come shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will fall i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you If you're still coming we have a few seconds for you we're out of time but it's my joy and my honor to leave it with this jesus 
the one we have so greatly spoken about from yesterday and even to today and all through the course of the conference those of you who are in front i salute you for making this noble decision and those who are outside those following online please may i request that you lift your right hand if you can those of you in front and say this after me please say this loud and clear say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i have heard your word and i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god thank you heavenly father for these ones in the name of jesus i thank you because you have brought them to yourself and the bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise cast away i declare your sins forgiven by the authority of scripture and i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god from tonight you walk in righteousness and you move from glory to glory in jesus name i pray now one last instruction for you may i please request that you follow the counselor waving his hands all of you together in concert to my left which will be your right let's honor them as they go let's honor them as they go hallelujah